Okay, this side seems to be working. Oh boy. Oh no, I have it muted. Good. Yay! Okay, so there is... Okay. So yeah, the stream is up. I'm just gonna tell everybody on YouTube to head over. Actually, um, could somebody, like, while the, the, the stream is already late, but, like, could somebody say if the sound is good? What do you mean, morning? Mick, did you just wake up? <laughs> there we go. So that's that's now on YouTube. Um Right, I had a plan for how to do today's stream. So, let's just gonna arrange things so that I know what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I don't know if you can see that the, like, the, this, this camera right here that I'm pointing at, if that's flickering, I, I can't do anything about that. I've been trying to fix that for ages and ages and ages, and this is the least amount of flickering I've been able to get out of it. Like, well, the other option is I set the gain, uh, I mean, not the gain, the, the exposure really high, but then the, the, the camera can maintain FPS, so it's just like, yeah, I can't do anything about that. Anyway, this is the, 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 the box of the card, because the card's actually right here. But, um, yeah, um... It is the golden sample because, uh, well, when it, when it eventually moves out of my daily system, um, it'll pro like I'll probably well I want it to just be the better uh, version of the RX five eighty chip, so yeah. Um, wait, me knowing what I'm doing? Did I just say I know what I'm doing? No, I just said I have a plan. That doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get the card out. And in front of the camera. So that's the card. It's very small. Um, well, okay, no. It's sort of mid-range. Like, it's, it is small, though. Um, like, yeah, it's pretty small as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so, you know, it is, however, thick. Um, as it won't, like, yeah, you can't run four of these in a system because uh, this takes up, like, two and, a, two and a little over half of a PCIe slot. And the lighting sucks. I, I give up. Um, <laughs> the, now, one th well, I don't know if that shows up, but the, the VRAM has, like, ridiculously thick thermal pads on it. So, I have, yeah, that just, like, I don't think it actually matters, but it doesn't look good. Um, there are switches along the edge of the card, so this one right here um, is for the LED on the logo. Um, so that, that can be on for red. I don't think it's actually RGB, it's just, actually it can't be. Well, no, it could be. Well, I don't know. I don't really care. I'm going to keep it turned off anyway. Um, and then there's another switch down on this edge, which is, of course, the BIOS switch. And there's two BIOSes on this card. There's an OC BIOS and a silent BIOS. I'm going to be overwriting whichever one of them doesn't have the right protection. Um, so, yeah, and the plan is basically I want to get this card dialed in to run, like, 1500 megahertz daily. Um, that's the goal, because it's supposed to replace the R9 Fury that currently lives in my daily system. And that R9 Fury has better things to do, like running four-way crossfire with all the other Furies I have. So, um, yeah, th that's why, why I got this card, basically to replace the, the, Fury, X, uh, the Fury in my daily system. Um... The 8-pin and the 6-pin I've mentioned, which incidentally, actually, about the 8-pin and the 6-pin, the VRM is still over here. Like, that's the vCore VRM. So, even though this does have an 8-pin and a 6-pin, I don't really think that the, like, I'm pretty sure it's going to pull a pretty decent amount of power through the PCIe slot. And we can check that. Um, and we will check that. Because uh, I have a, bot like, modified, uh, where is it? Well, 
basically I have one of these cheapo risers. And as you can clearly see, I've isolated the uh, 12 volt lines, if I could remember which of these were the 12 volt lines. So, yeah, but basically I should be able to check how much power it is pulling from the PCIe slot. Um, if I'm not, well, I don't really care. Like, it's only really a concern if you're running like a big multi-GPU setup, which this won't do anyway. But yeah, the VRM being over here doesn't make me believe that the... Like, I'm pretty sure, like, half of the VRM is still on the PCIe slot, which is just like, why do they keep doing that? I will never understand. Uh, the backplate, uh, well, uh, it'd be, like, there's no thermal pads that I can see under it. So, basically, it just acts as a giant uh, thermal block for, for heat to get away from the PCB, so that's not great as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, Buy's card complains about how bad it is. Uh, <laughs> this front side, uh, that right there looks like a great way to lose static pressure on the fans. If you look through the side of the card, I'd love to know where, like, the, the air is supposed to get out from here, because that is actually, like, I'm not sure if you, you can see, but that's basically solid. Wait, and I can't figure out where the camera is. Basically, there's, like, no way for air to get through that, as far as I know. So, maybe that loss of static air pressure is intentional. They, they wanted to, like reverse or something. I have no idea. Um, and then another thing <coughs> that I've noticed is that the heat pipes, which this will definitely not show up on camera, basically normally when you have heat pipes on a GPU cooler, it, they, they go and they're like uh, embedded in like a block of metal. Uh, here they basically seem to be glued or soldered onto a copper plate. So there's like big air gaps between all of the heat pipes. Um, I'm not saying this is a bad heatsink, but if the thermal performance on this thing turns out to be garbage, I have a few few theories on why that could be. <laughs> like, yeah, so that's a thing. Now, as far as specs go, this th thing comes at a stock at 1425 megahertz. So I, I have pretty high hopes for doing 1500. Anyway, let's get it into the system and uh, start benchmarking it. <coughs> Gonna switch it over to the monitor. Throw that in there. Go. There. So that's up and running. 1500 can be hard for a 580. I'm, see, I don't know. Because if we look at like, I, I've not played with any 580s before this one. Um, <clears throat> and I want it doing 1500 for daily. I don't want it doing 1500 just for, for benchmarks. Which like for benchmarks, yeah, 1500, no problem, absolutely. Um, but for, for every day, I don't know. <coughs> oh boy, the, the, the capture card is having an episode. USB device, what USB device not recognize? Windows go, which reminds me we're gonna need this later. <coughs> oh great, the mouse isn't working again. It does that. That's fine. That's normal. There we go. Okay, so let's get GPU-Z opened up. So this is the... Does it say which di... Like, because I know AMD supposedly has, like, uh, three different versions of the Pol Polaris chip. Like, you have... I think there's the Pro, the XTX, or... There's an XTX, which is, like, the full-size 580... Regular 580s. And then all the like super high clock speed 580s are using the, I think are using the XDR chip. I was, and I wanted to know if you could check that, but it looks like you can't. Well, whatever. <coughs> so I guess let's run some Fire Strike and see where this starts out. And CPU is currently at stock. Um, what? No. CPU is break again. 
Yes, it did. I hate this. It's like, like first, it's the AMD drive. Like this Windows install it was just like, I set it up earlier today, and it's just like first. The AMD driver doesn't work. Well, now, now CPU-Z doesn't work. Luckily, I have a different version which does work. But, yeah, that, that's just annoying. There. Yeah. So, everything's running completely stock right now. And I'll probably pull it up to 4.4 gigahertz later, but for now, I just want a baseline. Two ninety X max voltage uh, one point. Well, if you're on air cooling, I'd say one point three volts, and good luck cooling that. And if you're on water cooling, you can go up to like one point three five, and uh, good luck cooling that. Because at like one point three five volts, a two ninety X will pull like four hundred watts plus. System info: Why are you so slow? It's fine. Like it'll work eventually, but it's just slow. Incidentally, since I'm not going to be like that busy this stream, because there's no liquid nitrogen anywhere on this, um, I'm going to be answering questions quite a lot. Okay, so the zero fan mode is working right now. Also, I'm using the 18.2.1 driver for today. Just because that's the same driver I have on my daily system, and so I want to set it up for like the same driver. Um, which really, I don't think it would matter if I used 18.4, but whatever. Gigabyte didn't make a G1290X. They made a Windforce 290X. I had one. That heatsink is not big enough. Like, that, yeah. Like, if you have the Windforce 290X 1.3 volts, because otherwise that card is going over 85C. Like, that heatsink cannot keep up. And I, I was running, like, an aggressive fan profile. Fans are still off. That's impressive. When will you be reviewing the Ryzen APU, and what board are you going to test it on? So, first of all, I don't do gaming performance reviews, okay? Second of all, the main reason why I wanted that APU is to mess around with, uh, like, how far can I get the Fire Strike score on a 2400G? That's, like, literally all I care about. Because <laughs> uh, the thing is, it's an APU, so it should be really, really memory sensitive, and that just sounds like fun to me. I get to run 3D benchmarks where the RAM overclocking actually matters. Um... Well, one hundred percent fan won't cool it. I think with a hundred percent, the two ninety X still like the the two ninety X Windforce still hits like seventy five or something. Like it's not cool enough. And still, you should only go to like one point three volts. Which, if you want to know what offset that is, that's plus a hundred millivolts. Um, which I forgot that like a lot of people don't realize that you can like yeah. I don't know. I always reference to ab like I always reps reference absolute voltage, not the offsets, because the offsets are confusing. Because if you get a card that has either a lower or a higher starting voltage, which is rare, but if you did get a card which had a low starting voltage and then you put a hundred millivolts offset, it won't get you to the one point three volts. So yeah, and GPUZ should read voltage for a two ninety X correctly. So <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a two seven, uh, 2700X as well. Like, the 2400G and the 2700X turned up at the same time. So, and I've been messing with the 2700X a little bit, and I've been, like, playing with, on the MSI X470, uh, X470 board, and so far I've been messing with, like, Precision Boost Override, and it doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but, like, the Precision Boost Override doesn't seem to do a damn thing. As like, like I've tested single threaded, two threads, four threads, six threads, eight threads, twelve threads, sixteen threads, and I've tested that with like stock, 
um, 2x ratio, 5x ratio so far. I've not tested everything. Uh, like, I've not tested the entire range yet, but stock 2x and 5x, all of them score the same across every single one of those tests, and it's just like, this doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I don't know what, what like, I, it might be the motherboard, and I'll try other boards, but right now it just looks like if you don't have BCLK overclocking, the precision boost override seems really useless. So, yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that. Um, that's a good score to start with. Like, I was not expecting 15k, so we're not far off of... Uh, the Fury does, like, 16,000. So, yeah, th this is going to be easy to catch. Let's see, AMD Radeon settings. Global man, accept. Bam. Wait, can I lock the... Yay, I can lock the power states. <laughs> okay, I missed that, but, like... On some of the older cards, like, you can mod the BIOS to do that, but it's nice when you can just do it in software. Um, wait, this starts at 1150. What's the voltage limit? 1200. Okay, that seems to work. What about 1250? Uh, 1200? Really? Really? Oh, come on. That's lame. That's like really lame. Um, 3000 RPM. Wait, this doesn't... How, what? That's a really low RPM range. Like seriously, like I'd expect like 5K. Okay, well let's see how loud this is. This should be okay. It didn't turn on. Right there. Okay. Override both. No, I don't want to save a profile apply. Damn it! <laughs> I miss my good old fashioned, like... Yeah, okay, so I'm just... Wait, so how do I get it to turn on early? If I do that... I'll turn them on. Nope. Still no fans. Wh oh, right, we're at 35. Oh, well, 2K RPM is, like, tolerable in my opinion, so I'll just start with that. And let's just check what it does for thermals. Actually, I'll just run Fire Strike on loop. Oop. Loop, windowed, and uh, let's just do GT1. And uh, advance, wait, no. Settings, always on top. Okay, sensors. Uh, between the Gaming 7 and the X470 Tai Chi, which has the better VRM? Um, on X470, the Tai Chi. Yeah, the Tai Chi has the better VRM. Slightly better. But uh, I prefer Gigabyte BIOS. So <laughs> I'll just leave that there. Um, do I have a 7980XE? No, I don't. I do have a 7940X, though. So, yeah. That, like, I have the 14 core. Not the 18. Wait, did I just break the... Yeah, I did break the chat, didn't I? I'm so good at this. There. Wait, what? Why? Twitch... Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're hitting 60, 61. 70% fan speed. Like, that's actually, like, I can, yeah, that's audible. I'm not that impressed. 
62. How hot is the exhaust? Yeah, I'm I'm not. Oh boy. Yeah, there's no airflow coming out of the cart up here. That is well, I mean, it makes sense because of the way the fins are oriented, but uh, generally speaking, the easiest way to dump heat from a GPU is up the top edge. Because, um, uh, yeah, and there's... Yeah, I am really not impressed with that. Sixty-four. Okay, so at this rate, it'll probably max out around like sixty-eight. But that is, that sucks. <laughs> like, that just sucks in my opinion. See, I had high hopes. How warm is that heat pipe? That's cold. How's this one? That's not at 60. That is not even... You should not be able to hold your finger on a piece of metal that's at 60 degrees centigrade. I mean Celsius. Like, that should feel really, really uncomfortable. And it doesn't. So, either the thermal paste sucks, or I was right about the whole you should embed your heat pipes into a block of metal thing. Yeah, this is... Yeah, like... Th There's like... Yeah, so either the thermal paste sucks or the heat pipes aren't getting proper thermal transfer. Good job, power color. Good job, you know. Like, people people moan about, like, the Asus direct, uh, direct contact heat pipes, but they're, like, they, they seem to work... Like, when I was checking the temperatures on those, it was like, they, they seem to work, and, and, well, I wouldn't be seeing this, probably. But hopefully it's just a thermal paste thing. Because I've seen that, like, uh, some cards, you replace the thermal paste and you get, like, 15 degrees off. So hopefully it's just that. Sixty-six. Okay. Seems more or less stable at this. Let's see if maxing out the fan speed fixes this. Because in theory, if we're starved for airflow... Okay, that's loud. So in theory, if the heatsink is doing a good job of pulling heat away from the core and into the fin stack, more airflow should cause a big drop in temperature, which we're not really seeing. I am really not impressed with this heatsink design. I mean, I know power color is kind of like the cheap no-name AMD brand, like, for, for ages and ages, you wouldn't be able to even find them in, uh, well, in the Czech Republic, like, power color doesn't, didn't exist for, like, ages. Like, good luck finding them in a shop. And so, yeah. And when you found them, they were always, like, cheaper models than everybody else. So it's just like, well, I, I, I should have set my expectations lower, but... Yeah, yeah, I plan to stick Cryonaut on it anyway. Like, I have the tube ready right here. I was just hoping that the thermal performance out of the box wouldn't be completely atrocious. Because, like, even the, even the XFX GTR, right, that thing with its four dinky little six millimeter heat pipes, and, like, that cooler was a two-slaughter, that thing you could just about do... 
Actually, no, I think that would have been running a little bit warmer than this. Because this does have a higher power limit. But still, I'm not really impressed. Then again, I might be just biased because of all the, like, with the, the Fury cards. Like, those, those things you set the fan speed to 50% and they don't go over 55. Which is just great. I love that. But, yeah. So, it's not that loud. Mostly because the RPM doesn't go that high. But it really doesn't run that cool. Um, so that's rather unimpressive. So let's crank up the memory clock. Because I wonder... We're going to go in steps of 100 megahertz just because that's... Well, 2100 should work on like every Polaris chip ever. 2200 and 2250 is like good chips. Um, so, yeah, let's just run that again. Asus Strix is the best cooler on the RX 580. Probably. If you repaste that heatsink, it'll probably be the best. Because, I, I like, when I was review, like, I got a review sample of an RX 480 Strix, and that so need, like, that needed a thermal paste replacement so badly. Like, that car dropped 15 degrees from a thermal paste change, and so that was just like, oh my god. Like, wh when I first was testing it, it was like, this is terrible. Like, terrible performance, uh, like, cooling-wise. And then, then I re re replaced the thermal paste, and suddenly it was performing like a three-fan heatsink, and it was just like... Why is this so hard? Like, why, why can't you just do proper thermal paste application from the factory? Why do I need to replace it? Like, honestly, it's like they should just ship the GPU with a tube of cryonaut in the box. <laughs> and a screwdriver to take it apart with. Well, yeah, the standard 1-2 skip a few for Andig megahertz. I'm too lazy to test in, like, 20... Like, here's the thing. Like, everybody's like, oh, tw test in 25 megahertz intervals. It's like... If it crashes, you just... Like, the sooner you crash the system, the sooner you know what it can't do. That's my logic, right? There's no point knowing that, oh, yeah, it can do 20... It can do 2025. So what? It can do 2050. So what? It can do 2075. So what? Um... Uh, I did have a duel. I think that one was fine. I think. Like, thermal paste-wise. Here, here's my take on it. If you're in Europe, right, uh, then you deal with your RMA through your retailer, and your retailer basically, ha like, they won't... Um, for me, they've never denied a GPU with the warranty void stickers destroyed. Like, n never had a card denied for that. So, if you're in Europe, I'd say knock yourself out. Replace all the thermal paste on everything, because it's not like you can make it any worse, right? Like, I really doubt you're going to do a worse job than, than the factory did. Um, as long as you don't just put a P in the middle of the die, okay? That's the worst way to apply thermal paste ever. Like, never do that. Um, do like an, like, actually for GPUs, I would recommend you actually, like, make sure you cover the entire die and just, like, spread it with something. So I'm going to call this stable. Um, also, I'm going to drop the fan speed back down, because 3,000 RPM is actually, like, not okay with me. We're going to go for, like, 2,200. Um, I guess I'm going to aim for, like, 50C target, and... Uh, What else did I want to change? Right, let's go for 2150. Because, um, yeah, it's like 2100 every single card should be able to do. 2150 is like the first point where you might see a few cards drop out. 2200 is hard. 2250, really hard. And then there's some cards that do like 2300, which my GTR did before I killed it. 
I'm a moron. How do you spread paste on CPU? Um, for CPUs, I, like, if I'm in a rush, I'll just do an X. If I'm going for liquid nitrogen, I'll just, like, I'll spread it out properly. Um, just, like, get a thin layer across the entire thing. And basically what I do is I make, like, a fat line on one side of the chip, and then I take, like, drag that line out with uh, one of these guys. So, yeah. Twenty-one fifty. You know what's funny? Do you know how I uh, like the way my overclock for my daily system is set up? Is basically like I took it to the point where it would crash, and then I backed off fifty megahertz and called it a day. <laughs> or was it fifty? I think I backed off like a hundred megahertz and called it a day, and then never stress test. Like I've never fully stress tested my daily system, but I do have hardware info running, and it also never spits out hardware errors, so I'm good. <laughs> So I'm basically going to do the same for this GPU. I'm not recommending that you do this for your own system, especially if your system does like, you know, really important stuff. But if you're in a rush, there, there's nothing saying you have to do your stress testing properly. And I'm going to call this good as well. I uh, heard a thing about the, what, the graphite thermal pads? So... I already mentioned the graphite thermal pads on a previous stream. Basically, I've messaged uh, Innovation Cooling about getting review samples. They've not replied to me yet. Um, so, yeah. I hope they send samples. If they don't send samples, then what I... Well, actually... Uh, yeah, I hope they send samples. But one thing I really want to test is that there's actually, like, Panasonic and there's, like, a bunch of other companies like big industrial like big companies who make graphite thermal pads for industrial applications so i'm like my theory is that the thermal pads that uh innovation cooling is selling are actually just like rebranded panasonics or something so yeah no it's fair you can call them gra like graphites is just a what's it called thingamajiggy of carbon <laughs> I'm just going to call it a thingy majiggy. I can't remember the scientific term. Man, this system info sucks. Will we get another brutal zoid vid? Um so I don't know like see the thing is with with the whole brutal zoid character um there's like specific videos that I want to use it for and that one was actually like re like it wasn't great um I don't know maybe like I, there, I'm not saying there won't be but I don't currently have any plans so yeah yeah allotrope is what I was looking for Uh, have you messed with any Founders uh, Editions cards from NVIDIA recently? Nope. I've, like, the only NVIDIA 10 series GPU I've owned is a GTX 1070 Dual from Asus that I bought and then sold to somebody. Um, so, yeah. Oh, this runs 2200 good as well. Yay, it looks like I have a good memory controller. That's nice. So hopefully, I'll be able to just slap some uh, either the like the seventeen fifty megahertz timing strap, uh, and then run it at twenty twenty two fifty megahertz. I think that should work. That's basically what I'd like to do. Uh, what are the difficulties in overclocking dual GPU video cards? There's not really any difficulties to it. Well, no, on AMD. So on AMD cards, you can actually run your uh, core clocks and memory clocks different. You can run different clocks on both GPUs.
But if you're on NVIDIA cards, the only issue you really have is that, and like say, say if you're overclocking a GTX 590, the only real problem with the GTX 590 is that the GTX 590's PCB is terrible. And NVIDIA subsequently went and software locked everything. Like you can't change the power limit. You can't change the voltage. You can't do a damn thing on the card. Like the only thing you can change is the fan speed and the clocks. That's the only thing you can change because when you did have software voltage control before NVIDIA locked the cards down, uh, if you set the voltage high enough, the VRM would like die really, really quickly. Um, but that's just the 590s. And basically, I think on the NVIDIA side, all of the dual GPU cards, the main problem with them is that they're extremely power limited. And the, the reason why they're so extremely power limited is that if they didn't have all those limitations, they would blow up. Um, I think 690s would probably be okay. The Titan Z, I think, would be like a catastrophe. Um, yeah. And actually, I think actually I have a four a a viewer and a fan of a chat of the channel sent in a four eight seventy X two, which I will be messing with sometime in the future. And that thing looks actually kind of similar to the Nvidia style of doing dual, dual GPU cards. Like the VRMs on that thing look pretty anemic. I think they're just three phase or something. I can't remember right now. Um, and I basically, I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a live stream similar to like this one, except there it's not going to be like setting up the card to do anything. It'll just be like overclocking live stream on air with me tearing the card apart and everything. So yeah, I'm going to call 2200 good. Yeah. Uh, why do you not disable sysinfo for, for testing? Uh, because uh, I've, can you? Options. No. No. I forgot about it. <laughs> That's why. I normally, because normally if I'm running benchmarks, it's for hardware bot and they require system info. So. Yeah. Let's see. 20. Oh, it only goes to 20, uh, 2250. Well, that does make things a lot easier, doesn't it? Oops. No. 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 No, you stupid program. Smash that subscribe button like I'm smashing this escape. Run custom. Yeah, the 4870X2, that actually looks rather interesting to mess with. I also want to pick up a 5970T. I have two 590s. Um, and... Uh, what else is there? I want to pick up, I definitely want to pick up a 690 sometime soon. Because that, like, the 590 is just stupid. Like, there's so many, it's like, like, like there's so many problems on that card. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. The 690 looks like it might actually be kind of, like, that you won't have to, like, bend over backwards to make it overclock. So, I'm kind of, that, that's why I'm kind of interested in messing with the uh, 690. So yeah, that's why I want to pick one of pick one of those up. Um, what else is there? I want another seven nine ninety. Um, I can already technically run four way crossfire with the seven nine ninety, seven nine seventy, and the seven nine fifty I have, but I have a thing for dual GPU cards, so I do want another seven nine ninety. But I think. If I find a 6990 before I find a 7990, or if I find both of them at the same time, then I'm grabbing a 6990 first, because I've not had one of those yet. And also I want a 5970. Basically, I want every dual GPU card ever made. It's just a matter of hunting them down, because they're rather rare. Okay, so it looks like the, the memory overclocking is good, so that's nice. I'm going to call that stable as well. <laughs> You're supposed to stress test for 30 plus minutes, like for an hour. It's just like, nah. Nah. <laughs> I don't feel like doing that. Because the other thing is, is like, I used to run like, legitimately unstable GPU overclocks to the point like I'd be playing like Planetside 2 or something and I would see artifacting 
and all I would do is just tab out of the game, drop the core clock by 10 megahertz, go back into the game. No more artifacting, it's stable again. <laughs> so it's just, yeah. I have a really half, uh, r really bad approach to overclocking GPUs. Um, let's see if this works, 1500. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, run custom. Do you have a 295X2? No, I don't, and I really want one. Like, th those are badass, the, the 295X2s. And I'm pretty sure I could fit LN2 pots onto one of those. So I would totally would. <laughs> You know what? Let's see. Let's see what the current clamp says about how much current this is pulling. Because I know GPU Z is saying that we're pulling like uh, yeah, that's a core crash. Okay, so apparently this card doesn't do fifteen hundred. Got to be freaking kidding me. Yeah, two nine. Yeah. Well, that sucks. <laughs> it's like I bought the more expensive model specifically because I was hoping for better core clock. Nope. So yeah, somebody's like, fifteen hundred megahertz is gonna be easy. Just because your card does 1500 doesn't mean every card does 1500. Damn it. Okay, well, now I need to do something about the core voltage situation. So, um, well, before we do that, what I'll do is uh, I do want to baseline, like, I want to see where this maxes out, score wise. So let's see. Okay, even like trash cards do like 1460 on 1200. 2250. Power limit max. Can you BIOS mold this for more core voltage? Yes, you can. Uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to set it to like uh, 1.23 or 1.25 in the BIOS. And I'm also going to set the power limit to 400 watts and 250 amps. So, yeah. Actually, no, I just want the benchmark. The thing about RX 480s is they had like really low, like, 1340 is awful. Was it running really hot? Because that's another thing is like, Polaris is temperature sensitive and voltage sensitive. So if you can run it cooler, you get more clock speed. I think it was like 10 degrees for 10 megahertz more. And then if you can shove more voltage into it, then it clocks higher, obviously. So, yeah. Hopefully with the, the thermal paste upgrade, the card will run like 60s. I'm really hoping that works out. But I still don't get why they don't have a proper solid block for the, the, the heat sink. It's really unfortunate because like the, the, this card, it, like, it looks good in my opinion. I know that's completely subjective, but I do actually like the look of this thing. Um, It's relatively quiet. <laughs> if you didn't max the, if you didn't do what I did to the fan curves. Um, 
The one thing I don't like, one thing I'm worried about with the way that the card exhausts air out like this side as well as the back is that if you have a case, normally you have case fans right here that push air that way. And that seems like it'll end up fighting that first fan, which just seems like a bad idea. So, yeah, I've, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the Azrock 580 does the same thing for the heatsink. Like, from the photos, I... I uh, let me look it up. RX 580 fan gaming. Yeah, no, that has the same fin stack orientation. That would have the same issue to some extent, I think. Uh, I know the the GTR S card has the that has the vertical fin stack but that actually so it's funny like basically there's no good fin stack orientation on a GPU because if you do the the vertical like if we yeah let's just call this horizontal if you do the vertical one where the card exhausts half its air up this way it also dumps half the air into the motherboard and what ends up happening is that air uh, ends up piling up in front of the card so the if you don't have airflow in front of the GPU um, you get the card like sucking up exhaust air and basically just running really, really hot for no good reason. Like it, it starts heating up because it basically builds up heat in front of the card. Okay, so that's an easy 1,600, uh, 16,000 points right there. So that's nice. Um, now I think it's time to uh, disassemble the card. Swap out the thermal paste, see how that impacts thermals, and uh, um, yeah, so I'll just note down that this spits out 16k right now. Then we're, we're going to swap the thermal paste, and after that, actually I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just 16, 0, 22, at 1460 by 2250. Well, I'm going to try raise the core clock one more time. It's not like it immediately crashed 1500, but I was really hoping this card would do 1500 easy. Why did I have to kill the GTR? Uh, so fans oriented at an angle. If you orient the fans at an angle, you lose fin stack surface area. That's the problem. Like there's not really a good way of doing a GPU heatsink. Um, though I will say that the if you if you know what you're doing with your case, case airflow, the best performance is always going to be the cards that exhaust up uh, up from this like the the top edge here. That's the best place to exhaust because I did mention that they build up heat, like hot air under the, like all by the PCIe slot. But basically, as long as you have a fan blowing air across this area, that won't actually be a problem. So yeah. Which normally, like if you have a case with, uh, like most cases would more or less have that kind of airflow situation anyway. So, yeah, and the, the Strix from Asus has that kind of heatsink layout. The GTR has that heatsink layout. Uh, what else has that heatsink layout? I think that might be it. I think everybody else is doing it the, this way. And I don't like this way. <laughs> Let's see, 480, no, 580, because I know there's that gigabyte card. Okay, no, the gigabyte card also exhausts over the top edge and down the bottom edge. Though one thing, if you have like an M.2 SSD under a card like that, it'll obviously cook the M.2, so that's, that's also like, there's, there's trade-offs to everything, but ultimately if you do get that airflow in front of the card, those cards tend to run the coolest. Um, Nitro Plus is the same fan orientation as this, I think. Yep, 
Yeah, so what the, the 7970 Toxic cards, which actually have this horizontal fin orientation, what they do is if you look at those cards, like right in the middle of the heatsink, there is actually holes going all the way through the fin stack right there. There's like a, a sort of, yeah. So Sapphire put like holes through that entire area of the heatsink. Which makes sense because basically, like on this heatsink, I'm going to tell you, like, I think there's a dead spot right there in terms of airflow. But on the Sapphire card, you would basically just have a stream of air coming through that. Also, that card clears the PCB really, like, a lot. Like, that heatsink is far away from the PCB, whereas this one is basically, like, it is. Like, there's like two millimeters gap between this heatsink and the, and the PCB itself. So, yeah. So that's why this uh, this isn't so great for your th this isn't doing so hot on the temperature testing. So now this is doing sixteen one fifty at fourteen eighty by twenty two fifty. Okay. So let's shut down and replace that thermal paste and void the warranty. Void the warranty because I'm in Europe, so <laughs> I'm just going to send the card back if there's a problem to the retailer. Incidentally, those warranty void stickers aren't supposed to work even in like America. But I, I don't know if like it'll be easier to deal with the. This is cold. The fans aren't. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, let's get sw switch cameras. Uh, do you think uh, AIB partners are going to be more PCB quality conscious with the new round of GTX cards? No. Most of them are just going to do the bare minimum that NVIDIA requires, which is what they usually do. Anyway, um, okay, so this seems rather simple to take apart. Da, 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 and heatsink will come off. So let's do that. Okay, so those are spring loaded. One. I should have done the VRM first. It's not as, uh, the one thing you really don't want to do with the GPU when taking off the heatsink is rocking the PCB across the heatsink plate because you'll cr uh, you'll crush the corners of the die. So that's Damn, this does not come apart easy. Up. Ew. <laughs> okay, well, that's not the worst thermal paste job I've ever seen. Up. That's one fan connector. Those are some small power stages. They did advertise that they are on direct moss, so there. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why is there screws <laughs> in the base plate? Will the base plate just like pop off if if I I I, I really hope I don't regret this. But see, I have a have a I have a problem. I see screws, and I get a sudden urge to see why <laughs> the hell there's screws right around here. Because that is really odd. Because you'd think that that plate is soldered to the heat pipes. So why would you need screws? That is it? Is it getting 
OK, no, it does seem to actually be soldered, and that is just structural rigidity. Is it? Yeah, no, OK. I was worried they were using thermal paste. If they were using thermal paste, I would have killed them. <laughs> well, no, but I would have just gone and, like, probably said how power color doesn't know how a heat sink is supposed to work, but that just seems to be a structural rigidity thing, which is fine. That's good. That's actually a good thing. But, yeah, that was, that's odd. I wonder if this, uh, the VRAM plate just pops off, though. I mean, VRM probably. No, that seems to be... Is that glued on or soldered on? That's another thing about a lot of... Well, I can't bloody tell. Well, the memory overclock's fine, so I'm not going to say there's a problem with that. But, uh... Yeah, but that's... That's alt. That's like the first time I've seen a base plate on a GPU where they've, they've had, like, screws holding it together. Um, let's see. Here's the... Okay, let's do the PCB, I guess. There's not much to the heatsink. So here's your P the PCB. Um, some of the thermal pads evidently came off. So that memory chip isn't getting fully covered. Um, they have some kind of weird black um, glue-esque stuff on the card. Not entirely sure what's up with that. Like, you can sort of see it around the like this chip right here. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. It's not a problem. It just looks weird. Um, okay, so that's going to be VDDCI. That's going to be vCore. vCore is a six phase. Yep, the voltage controller is a international rectifier 3567B. Of course it is because it's an RX480. Well, RX580, same damn thing. Um, what's the power stage? Oh, boy. I can't read those. is really small. Eight eight two four zero. Okay, let's see. See if that comes up with a number or if I'm blind. Uh, eight eight two four zero. Oh, that is a thing. for DRMOS Wait a minute Why is Google so bad at finding data sheets sometimes? Infineon, DRMOS, 5x5. Five five. Okay, no, that's a TDA. It's a different part. Okay, let's try this. Well. Oh, yeah, the, the power connectors are a different color. I don't really care about that. Um, so, apparently, wait, are those 35 amp power stages? You gotta be kidding me. 
Infineon 88240. Is 88240, right? That definitely says 88240. And these are an absolute nightmare to find. I can see a bunch of them being mentioned on, like, uh, on forums that EVGA uses them. Got to be joking. I thought those were 45s. Where's my GN mod mat? I don't, I told Steve I don't need one. It's too big for my desk. Come on, Firefox, stop being so freaking slow. Oh wait, that's the wrong camera. That one. Okay, what, what chip is this? That's the 21. 21, 2, 3, 1. Google, are you being stupid? That is a completely different chip. Why is Google so useless? Right, so apparently I can buy these chips, but I can't get a spec on them. That's nice. <laughs> UDR Moss. TDA21. And my internet is so slow right now. Ah, oh, well, I am streaming at the same time, aren't I? So I should stop complaining. Four by four millimeter. Which I think these are. Let me just get a calipers. Check that. Yeah, okay, these are four by fours. Yeah, that's a four millimeter power stage. So that's like a reduced size package. Um, Okay, that's, oh boy. So, I've not managed to find the actual chip. Like, I've not managed to find these chips specifically. But, like, the closest thing I can find is a 21240. And that's a 40 amp part. And that's not a good thing. Like... It, it probably won't blow up, but... Oh, look, and there's the 21242, which is the same size package and only 25 amps. So that one's even worse. And they have a 241. I don't think they make a part stronger than this at all. In this, like, in this size of chip, they don't make anything stronger than 40 amps. Which, if they don't do, then, you know, it's safe to assume that this is... Yeah, so that's a 35 amp part. This right here is a... Oh, no, this is a... Yeah, okay, that's a 5x5. Five five. So that's a 5x5 five five millimeter. 
So yeah, it looks like these are like 40 or 35 amps, which uh, for an RX 580, I'm gonna say not good. <laughs> like if it's 35, then that's actually just straight up terrible. Um, Cause that gives you 35 times six, that gives you 210 amps maximum current throughput. That's awful. And I mean, we weren't close to that, right? We were running like 1.2 volts. Well, no. Yeah, 1.2 volts and about 200 watts into the card, according to GPU-Z and about 190 output, something like, or 180 output. Um, so, you know, we were pushing what, 150 amps, but still. Like, I'm really not impressed. I mean, the, the RX 580 Nitro is, the, is a 40 amp power stage from International Rectifier, so, you know, and, and compared to other RX, 480, uh, RX 580s, it's not that bad. But uh, I was hoping for like 45 or 50 amp power stages, not, not this. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Man, this is just like disappointment after disappointment. I should not buy, this is, this is basically why I started AHOC. It's because you buy something, then you take it apart and you re real, that's when you find out it's absolutely like built with the, the cheapest stuff they could get their hands on. Um, and the annoying thing is this card's like expen like is a premium model of the, the 580 for power color. It's the most expensive version of the card they do. And ob obviously I know they use the same PCB across the uh, across the Red Devil versions. They're all the same PCB, so it's not like this is actually a different card, but you'd be hoping that with how much they charge for one of these, they'd give you a VRM that is, you know, actually good. Or overkill, at least, not just good enough. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's disappointing. It's really disappointing. Um, XFX uses, I think, the exact same VRM on the uh, GTS card, not the GTR. The GTR has the same VRM you'd find on, like, a Fury X, which is pretty awesome. But the, the GTS uses, the I think, this, these exact same power stages. So, yeah, that's not great. Where's the alcohol? There it is. Actually, I've not done the heat sink base plate. I wonder if that's nickel plated copper or if that's aluminum. Let's scratch it with something. Actually, that was a terrible idea on the basis that that doesn't show you anything at all. Wait. Okay, now that is, uh, that is nickel plated copper. So if you wanted to slap liquid metal on one of these cards, you'd be fine. And uh, I'll see if it'll show up on camera. But you can see how that scratch is a kind of orangey. Has a bit of an orangey glint to it. So yeah, this is nickel plated copper. It's not uh, straight to it's not aluminum, so that's good. You can slap liquid metal on this, and, it, and it'll be fine. It won't uh, won't disintegrate, um, which is actually basically what liquid metal does to aluminum. So that that's the technical term. <laughs> it gets disintegrated. There we go. Nice and clean. And where's the micro? Man, that is staining. What is this thermal paste? That is actually kind of hard to clean off. 
Nicole fight. <laughs> Yeah, what is with that? That is like, like, I don't know if that shows up. Yeah, no, it does show up. Like, is there some kind of coating on this that the alcohol is like dissolving? Because that is, like, I've not seen that before with a thermal paste where it would just... Well, I'll call that clean enough. Get the dye. There, mirror finish. See if the camera can see itself. There we go. So. That's a nice and clean now. So yeah, let's see what other MOSFETs we have here. And that's a 4C10N. So the, the VDDCI VRM up here, that's 4C10Ns, that's normal. Um, this is a fully integrated buck converter for the display drive. We have two what looks like low dropout regulators. I'm gonna assume one of these is like seven volts uh, gate drive voltage. Actually, no, the, one of these is gonna be five volts gate drive and the other one's gonna be like seven or 10 for the other stuff. So yeah, basically these two are providing power for VRMs around the card. That's all they do. Um, yeah, not much to it. I don't really feel like taking off the back plate. There's probably nothing interesting on the back of the card. I have no idea who makes these capacitors. They look very bog standard, so... Yeah, basically this is a pretty generic, on it like, the, yeah, the, well. Ooh, it, lo it looks like this, uh, so this card does still have the uh, current balancing um, solder points right there. Yeah, this new webcam is actually quite a bit, bit better at autofocusing. But uh, yeah, so that is used for doing the 12 volt power uh, current balance on this thing. Which actually, since we're talking about that, I'm just gonna check where the 12 volts are sourced from for the V-Core VRM. It should be split like half-half. Um, let's do that. First thing is, we're gonna have to stabby stabby the 12 volt pins on the PCIe connector. There, you can actually read that for once, yay! Um, so that's the, that there, that should be 12 volts. Wait, is that, no, I might be touching ground. Let me check. Okay, so that cap says, and then I'll check this against a known ground. Okay. So that is actually 12 volts. So that right there, that capacitor is hooked up to um, to the PCIe slot. And that's uh, input filter for that power stage. Well, basically it's noise for that power stage because uh, the switching noise from that power stage, it's, uh, that, that's what that capacitor is there to take care of. What about this guy? Is that also on this? Okay, no, it... it uh, no, maybe I got the wrong side on that one. On cap. Okay, is that one off of the... Oh, that one's off the six pin. That's cool. So, looks like we have... I'm going to guess that it's the bottom two power stages that are off of the PCIe slot. Yeah, so it looks like we have these two power stages off of the PCIe slot. This one seems to be off of the 6-pin. Because um, if we do that again, 
Unless I'm hitting ground, which, uh, let's check. No, I'm not hitting ground. So I'm, right now I'm touching a screw if we actually... Yeah, so that's not ground. That is definitely, that is definitely 12 volts. Yeah, so that one's 12 volts there. What about this one? Same thing. So we have two, two, okay, so that's two more phases on the six pin. And I'm going to guess that this phase right here is uh, also on the six pin. Um, okay, that's interesting. What about you? Also the six pin. Wait a minute. Are these two connected? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Those are in parallel. Okay. So, cool. Um, I wonder if this has detection then. So that's interesting. I did not think they would do that. So let's see if that 6-pin actually has proper uh, detection of if it's plugged in or not. No, it doesn't. That is very... So, okay, cool. So that's how they've done it. That's how they've done it. The Basically what they've done, um, I'm, I'm just checking the... So normally one of the three ground pins on a six pin is, uh, is going to be a sense pin. And what they seem to have done here is they have three grounds. Like literally that's, that six pin has as much ground as a full on eight pin does. Um, I wonder if the eight pin even has any sense in that case. It should. Like this card should not turn on without an eight pin. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. Oh man. So basically, if you plug in a six pin, this thing should turn on. If you plug in an eight pin, it should still turn on. If you plug in both, it should turn like it, it literally basically what they've done here as far as I can tell in terms of the wiring is that you can plug in an eight pin or a six pin or or both and the card can't tell the difference because there's nothing there to tell the difference. Yeah. So you should be able to run this off of just a six pin. I'm not sure that's a good, <laughs> like, okay, so you're not going to burn out your six pin um, unless you like modify the BIOS and then get the card to somehow pull 300, 400 watts that, through, through the six pin. Then you might burn out your six pin. But uh, you like, well, this is basically what AMD got flack for on, on the RX 480 originally, is like, you can't push that much power. You shouldn't push more. The, the whole card's power consumption through the 6-pin. So just for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna run, I'm going to try run this off of the, just the 6-pin. Because uh, like, it looks like that should actually work, even though that's not supposed to work like that. Um, but hey, I guess, I guess you can call it a feature. The card will turn on regardless of how bad your power supply is. If it, if it only has a 6-pin, the card will still turn on. Um, where did I put that tube of crinol? There we go. Uh, and the spatula thing? Where'd that go? Oh, there it is, under the mouse. Okay. So let's do the thermal paste and uh, reassemble this thing. And then try to fire it off, off of the, the six pin. That's... I did not expect them to have it like that at all. Okay. There, now we're just going to slap the card together, you know? Good, good thermal paste application. <laughs> uh, no. That looks, uh, that looks flawless to me. That looks really good. That is good coverage. Right there. Folk, man, yeah, this new camera is a lot better. So, yeah, you can see that is very, 
well, relatively even. The thing is, it's thermal paste. It, it, it'll squeeze out under pressure. So, let's reassemble. Which, uh, which way does this go? Right, this way. And uh, like that. Okay, wait. No, I don't like it. <laughs> um, I mean, I could just leave the LEDs un unplugged, but... Come on. Damn, you freaking stupid little... I hate these. I absolutely hate all the fan cables on cards and everything, because you can never, never get at them. Actually, that one's relatively accessible. Eh, no, let's do it now. Okay, that's all done. Oh yeah, and, and the thermal pads on this thing are fat. Right, like those are tall thermal pads, but VRAM overclocks just fine, so I'm not going to complain about that. Let's see. This is really hard to get the alignment on. Okay, so VRM is aligned. Oh boy, did I lose screws? Okay, well, I know this one's one of the ones for the VR. I'm not liking the mounting. Is there any difference between the screws? Okay, wait, how many? That's four. I'm missing one. Where'd it go? There it is. Any difference between any of those? No, they, they all look the same, so... So that's interesting. The... sort of... standoffy bits on the base plate? They don't actually go like the, well, they, they don't go through the PCB at all. So there's like a fixed, uh, like the amount of pressure you can apply is pretty, like is fixed on this card. You can't really over tighten it because uh, there's a limit. Well, basically, they'll, they'll, it'll bottom out, so it's kind of nice, but at the same time, if, the, if they set it up wrong from the factory, then, then you're never going to get full thermal performance out of it. So, yeah. But they probably, like, there's probably enough mounting pressure, regardless. Okay, so, here, that's reassembled. That was rather simple. Hopefully I didn't screw the card up. Um, let's get it back in the system and see if it turns on with just a six pin and doesn't even complain about it because that's that's the main thing like a lot of cards can technically just turn on but they'll give you a message like hey uh, you should you should probably plug in your eight pin connector not your six pin but uh, this doesn't seem to have the circuitry to do that so let's try that and switch the cameras and and we shall see ninety six b two yeah. I'm going to say I'm correct, and this, this won't. Yeah. So I was right. This card literally 
does not have the circuitry to figure out if you have an 8 pin or a 6 pin plugged in. Or if they're both plugged in at the same time. It doesn't know. It doesn't really care. Oh, no, fan stopped spinning. This has a zero, fo zero RPM fan mode, damn it. Uh, so, that's fun. <laughs> it's like, it's not just AMD that doesn't know how to fo follow the PCIe spec. Their own board partners don't know how to follow the PCIe spec. That's fine. Um, let's see what kind of thermals we get now on the Cryonaut. Before it was doing about 67 with, uh, with, uh, like, like th this much RPM. Um, this is still in, uh, no, settings, yeah, it's always on top, cool. So, benchmarks, fire strike, custom run, boom, 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 turn those off. Off, I said, you stupid benchmark, and I want it looped, and I want it windowed, and run. <sighs> oh yeah, and we're going to do that off of a six pin. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I did, I did not think they would do that. I don't know how to feel about that. Because honestly, if I was designing a GPU PCB, I'd do this. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense not like to bother with the proper safety precautions. But uh, it's, uh, it's interesting that it doesn't matter if the card has a 6-pin or an 8-pin plug in. Oh, did I forget to set up the fan controls again? Why are the fans not spinning? Spin! Did I forget to plug in the fans? No, they spun up at the start when, when, when I started the GPU up first. Oh, there we go. There, now they ramped up. Temperature seems to be just about the same. Yeah, so actually it looks like the stock thermal paste was already perfectly good. And the cooler is bad. Well, it's, well, it could be better. Let's put it that way. It's not... It's not outright bad, but it definitely could be better. Um, now, they don't spin up till 60, but I want them to spin at 50, damn it. And I thought, like, the... I, I thought that uh, the AMD control panel would override that. But temperatures look about the same. The heat pipes feel marginally warmer, maybe, but my memory is not great, so I'm not going to use that as a scientific scientific measurement. Yeah, so temperatures basically haven't improved at all. That sucks. <laughs> so, okay, wait. I'm going to crank up the fan speed again. Absolutely max it out. Let's see if we can get it lower. You know what I really wish? That the, the card had a two-piece heatsink with like a separate VRM plate, like a cooling plate for the VRM and the VRAM. And, uh, well, that, basically. Because um, then I could go and grab one of the Morpheus 2s and just slap that on there. Actually... I might be able to do that anyway. I think. I am very tempted to do that. 
Let me just get something. So, yeah, temperatures are basically the same. The heatsink kind of sucks. We're going to slap a Morpheus on there. Actually, this entire card sucks. The basic, everything sucks. It's like, yeah, it'll do... The core sucks, it doesn't do 1500. The VCB doesn't have proper power stages. It has some tiny little 40, 4 by 4 millimeter, you know, ultra compact power stages meant for mini ITX motherboards and laptops, I guess, or something like that. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just pull off the, we'll just pull off the, I'll just pull off the heatsink off of this thing. This is, uh, this is the VRM of the, the GTR. Um, so we'll use that heatsink, and then we'll slap a real cooler on the card. Which, uh, where did I put those? <sighs> yeah. This might actually be able to run passive with one of these. Oh boy. So, uh, black or sil silver? Which one do you think would look better? I'm leaning towards black. Yeah, I'll go with the black one. Up. I will show you coolers. Okay, so... Yeah, temperatures have not improved at all. Um, but uh, this, this is going to improve temperatures. <laughs> that is not a question. That is just a fact. Um, well, the VRAM might get a bit... Actually, no, because this is relatively low fin density. Oh, wait. Oh, you know what I've wanted to do for ages? I really wanted, like, I really wanted to do... Like get two of these uh, CPU fans for AMD CPUs, and then like do both of them attached to one of these, and have like the most AMD AMD GPU ever. <laughs> but uh, I have like I do have two of these, but I have two different revisions, and yeah, so that, that they don't look the same, and it just like that actually annoys me. The power connectors, I can get over that. They're, they're a little thing, but the fans, they, they have to look the same. Um, so, yeah, um, that kind of sucks. But we, we shall now give the card a real freaking heatsink. With the joke that power color put on it. Um, order on heat, uh, yeah, I can, Wait, for the fans? So, black, okay. We're going with the black one. I like the black one best. And get some, ooh, I know. I bet I could, uh, yeah, okay, I, I've just had an idea. Rage in Tech makes, like, these red and white fat. Oh, no, but the rest of my system won't go with that. Actually, no, the rest of my system is, like, black. Mostly. Except for the orange fan. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, actually, no. I'll ask for a bunch of fans to replace all of the fans in my system. In the right color scheme. That will look good. Either way, Ragentech makes these fans which have like a red frame and white uh, fan blades, and I think they look really good. So I'm going to ask for a bunch of those. So let's see. Damn it! Where'd that go? See, I did not realize I'd be doing this today, so I naturally did not bother to, like, make sure that I actually had, like, any idea where the tool I need is. Oh, there we go, found it. It's nice when the desk isn't completely buried in stuff. So, um, first we need to, so I've already pulled the screws off of that that I keep on there. Um, I mean, nuts or bolts or whatever the hell those are called. Let's pull this apart. 
Actually, let's do the VRM first. This really sucks. I'm doing like a full, like basically the only th parts of this card I'm keeping is the PCB and the backplate. And I don't even like the backplate or the PCB. <laughs> so this is a complete failure as far as buying a card goes. Oh boy. Thing is, the Strix card was like way more expensive. And actually getting a hold of the XFX GTR-S card is actually pretty hard right now in the while. Well, it was relatively, well, no, it was a convenience thing because I was buying a bunch of other things from the retailer that I bought this card from, so I wouldn't pay for extra shipping. Actually, I bought so much stuff at the same time that I got shipping for free. Um, so, yeah. Um, but the trade-off is that now I have a card that I'm really not that happy with. Here we go. Um, put the fat. Put the, where do I put this? Where do I put this? There's no space anywhere. Let's put it on the chair. Okay. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get that. Is that actually going to... Wait, do they change the distance? Please no. Because it looks like they kind of... Like this looks like a slightly changed reference PCB. So that's what I'm hoping it is. Will these screws even fit the heatsink I'm using? Uh-oh. Okay, well, I have a bunch of spare screws from other AMD cards, so that, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll solve that part. That's not a problem. Hop. But will this even... Oh, boy. No! It's the wrong size. Damn it! That means I need to find a different heatsink. Because this VRM is not good enough to cool itself on its own. Damn it. Okay. That really, really sucks. No, that won't work. That won't work at all. I mean, even if this... Here, here's the thing. That can... That technically makes the distance. Like, I could make that do the distance. The problem is... That is not the right size. <laughs> oh, boy. Why can't anything ever be easy? Okay, and there's no way I'm getting the... Yeah, that's not gonna... Heck, nah... Maybe, maybe, just maybe, if I'm extremely, say hello to the, the VRM from the Sabertooth again, it makes a return. I mean the VRM heat sink from the Sabertooth, that'll, that'll totally, hell yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> hell yeah I'm running that, that'll look epic, except for the part. No, the screw holes are in the wrong orientation. I can't win. I literally, like, see that? I mean, there. See? Can't win. I just can't win. Well, that's, that's, that was my last hope. I don't think I have any other heatsink-esque shaped... I mean, I could, I guess I could try steal a heatsink from a motherboard? But no, the motherboards actually need those heat sinks. Oh boy. Man. This sucks. This really sucks. Yeah, no, that's not the right size either. 
Okay, so... Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a fail. That's a m massive freaking fail. Why? Why couldn't they just have made... Well, that's that's great. I mean, you know what? We're, we'll, we'll still throw the, the big freaking air cooler on there. Just to see how that does. Um, but it looks like uh, I'll be stuck with the stock air cooler on this thing afterwards. Because, uh... Oh man, that looks hilarious. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so we need to... It's gonna... I'm not gonna re redo the... Th well, actually I will. There. That's actually all I need to do, don't I? Because, yeah. Damn it! I was really... Really hoping that, like, I could run the... That would have been... That would have been epic. Like, I could have probably run that passive. And, and still got, like, good temperatures. Because that heatsink is ridiculous. The, the Morpheus is. There. Anyway... I think this is already on the right, um, like, the right pattern, because the last thing this was on was a 587T. If I remember correctly, those use this same, yeah. Wait a minute. What the hell? Backplate seems to not. Yeah, that is. It's not a good thing. Backplate doesn't seem to quite align with the. Is that flat? That better be flat. Oh no. Oh boy. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. So I'll give up on that before uh, I start taking edges off the core. Damn it. Oh well, we still have the BIOS molding to do. So that's a fail. So basically, if you're going to be buying an RX 480, I mean 580, don't buy this one. PCB sucks. The, the, the core is, like, that's silicon lottery. I'm not going to blame power color for the core. But I will blame them for the PCB. That's theirs. That's 100% their fault. Uh, it's not, like, you know, proper power stages. Um, and then if you, you know, if you want to actually, like, customize the card with, like, a bigger air cooler, you're stuck on this thing, because, uh, well, I mean, I could take off the black plate, and then obviously it would fit, but I don't feel like going that far, basically, because, anyway, you'd be stuck with no cooling on the VRM, because this, this, this is, this is part of the heat sink. Ah, uh, that sucks. That really, really sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with uh, reapplying the film. Well, no, I will. Because I'm not going to be redoing it again, ever. No, I don't want to take the card apart a second time. Well, this is the last time the card is taken, getting taken apart. I'm not doing it again. Boy, does this suck.
Oh well, at least, you know, here's the thing, it goes into my daily system. So it's not really that big a loss that the, the card that's just gonna uh, basically power my ability to ship post on Reddit, that, that card sucks. Not a big deal. <laughs> that's fine. That is completely fine. Um, though I guess good job power color on the thermal paste, because uh, I didn't manage to upgrade that. Funny thing about the 8-pin and the 6-pin, though. <laughs> like, that is... That is odd. Anyway, let's get that back in the system. And... Nope, wrong freaking thing. There. Um, time to do some BIOS molding. Also rebuild the GTR VRM while this powers on. Man, this really sucks. <laughs> like, I'm, I was really, really hoping that this this thing would run like fifty, like well, cooler, faster, better. You know, just but yeah, I mean. At least I'm not trying to competitively benchmark the card, because then then that would suck. Like that, this would be an actual major problem. Right now, it's just kind of like a minor inconvenience. I, my my, uh, my Reddit machine won't be quite as good at redditing, <laughs> which Reddit doesn't even use GPU acceleration. So, get the point. Um, which way did this go on? Is it this way? I guess it was this way. It's actually kind of obnoxious to a reassemble. Okay. That's done. Let's get to the modding. First things first, ATI flash. I need to back up a BIOS. Window as well, because it's getting kind of warm in here. So now we have a BIOS backup. Um, and I'm going to do this the lazy way. I'm just going to use Polaris BIOS editor um, for, for a chunk of this because there's some things that the Polaris BIOS editor can't do, and there's some things that it does better than I do. Um, BIOS editor, yeah, yeah, I might void my warranty, so. I'm gonna make uh, 
Just to be safe, I like to make a copy. Like, I like to never edit my original backup file. Rename uh, to, um, what should we do? Power limit, core voltage, and what else did I want to do? Oryx 580 RD Pro. Let's just call it Dash Pro BIOS, yes. It's a professional BIOS set up by me. That that <laughs> that is totally a thing. Okay, let's open that. Um, desktop. Where's my there? Nope. I'm right, it's an ATI flash. Pro. This BIOS is less than I don't care. Uh, let's do 2500 megahertz max memory clock. Uh, t wait, the TDP is 145? Max power limit, 190. Okay, so we're just going to do that to 200. Because um, otherwise I'm worried the VRM will blow up. 300, 300. No, that's 399, 300. The card should not be able to pull that. Um... There's our, oh boy. Oh, I'm on micron memory. No. It gets worse. Why? It has Micron. No! <laughs> Why? I should have noticed that sooner. Oh well, at least it's going into my daily system. At least it's going into my daily system. It doesn't matter if it sucks, because that whole system sucks. It's literally made up of all the worst parts I have. <laughs> Actually, well, no, that, that is basically true. Like, the worst RAM I have is in my daily system. The worst Ryzen 7 1700 I have, in my daily system. The, uh, the uh, X370 Gaming K5 motherboard, also in my daily system. She's actually doing a decent job of. Like right now, just streaming, the, the VRM temperature has not exceeded 64 degrees since uh, the 80 hours ago that I last turned the system on. Um, okay, so we're on micron memories. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. I'm going to copy the 1750 timings into the 2000 megahertz and and hopefully that that works if i'm lucky 12 uh 12.25 that should work um ooh we have fan controls here Yeah, no, but he, so for the person who says uh, float booth says my Samsung R uh, 480 on stock timings didn't clock about 2150. So the thing is, um, with RX 480s and RX 580s, there's two variables with the memory. Actually, I think there's really only one variable, your memory controller. It's not about the memory chips. Well, no, it is about the memory chips, but... Basically, there's two variables. You have the memory controller on the GPU die itself, and then you have the actual memory chips. If you have good memory chips and a good memory controller, you get great memory overclocking. If you have bad memory and a good memory controller, you still get pretty, like, in, like this card still clocks the memory reasonably high. It's just not, it's still not good RAM. 
Like I had Samsung RX 480s that were doing like 2250 on tight on 1750 timings. Uh, the GTR was doing 2300 on Samsung with 1750 timings. So basically, it really you can't just say, oh, my card had Samsung memory and it clocked like garbage. No, it doesn't work like that. It's like there are too many variables. But yeah, still. Like hopefully, if it does the 1750 timings, it'll hopefully be okay. Um, let's see. I want to... Wait, they have a max RPM of 3. Acoustic limit. I don't know what any of those fan things do, and I honestly don't care. <laughs> so, save it over that. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to do one more thing. So, normally, if you like, look at the uh, sixty-five thousand. Oh, this. Oh, those are, uh, so the way that works is uh, those are actually, uh, I think they're addresses. They're not actual voltage values. Um, basically, those are, I think they're pointers or something like that to the vid thing, and that dynamically changes the voltage. So the voltage is not, like the BIOS doesn't specify a fixed voltage. It specifies a vid range. And the card then chooses its vid range, and the vid range is done as these sixty-five thousand something values. And that, like, I've never really looked into it that much. All I know is if you replace them with a millivolts value, you get millivolts. So, yeah. Anyway, the one thing I want to do is change that version string. So let's do that. Um, HXD um, and uh, view. No, wait, no. Extras, options, uh, format. I want this to be legible for you guys. So let's do it in size 16. Okay. And we're going to take that. Boom. So there. And what I'm going to do is, you see that? That is the version string. I'm going to take that. Now we're going to get, where's notepad? Notepad. Paste that in there. And let's see, BZB for Buildzoid BIOS, <laughs> RX580. RD dot 300 watt dot 17T for 17 timings. That doesn't quite fit, does it? I just leave it at 300 watt and mic 17T. So for micron 17 timings. Yeah, okay, I like that. Just copy that in there. Bam. Save. Close. Don't save. And now we're going to run. Uh, I'm going to copy that, paste that, rename it. BIOS, and then I'm going to run flash BIOS, and it's going to flash. How do you know uh, what memory manufacturer a set of RAM or a GPU has before buying it? You don't. Well, like for, for DDR4 memory, you can kind of tell what it is based on the, like the, like for example, 41, uh, 8, gig, 8 gig sticks um, rated at say um, 3200 CL14 has to be Samsung VDI because currently there's no other memory chip that'll do those settings. Um, but if suddenly Hynix made a chip that does 3200 CL14, you could, like, that would stop working immediately. Because immediately the memory manufacturers would start throwing Hynix memory chips into the 3200 CL14 uh, memory kits. 
Now I'm just going to check that the BIOS actually took, and we can see that it did indeed change the, the version string. So let's just shut down and uh, restart. Because basically the, the BIOS needs to be actually like, re like the card needs to actually read the BIOS on startup for the BIOS to do anything. And I'm just going to re reset up this thingy. Someone please explain to my brother not to use Extreme LLC at Buildzoid. Uh, I don't know. Let him use uh, if he if he if he feels like he wants to use Extreme LLC, he can use Extreme LLC. I mean, it's his system. <laughs> So hopefully now we have that extra voltage. There we go. Stupid little bolt. I'm probably going to end up locking the actual clock speeds in the BIOS. Um, one, once I'm like sure of what the, well, sure of what the card can do. Um, with the new BIOS, but first things first, GPU-Z, uh, sensor tab, what I want to check is what voltage we run at. I, uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm stupid, aren't I? Oh, well, the good news is the memory isn't crashing, so that's nice. The bad news is the, the voltage is, like, overdrive overrode it. So basically what I'll have to do is, well, that's fine. It's fine. I can take care of that. You know what I really hate? AMD's latest driver updates broke tricks. And I think I've not checked any other overclocking utilities, but Trix is my favorite one and it's really, really broken. Um, if you try to use Trix 6.4, well, actually, I don't know if they've put out a new version of Trix. They might have, but... Uh, Sapphire Trix, but 6.4, well, any version of Trix right now, if you use it with the latest drivers and change anything, it will lock the card at 300 megahertz core clock. AMD drivers, man. Like, I like to be fair, for most normal users, you can just use the overdrive utility and you're fine. But I like Trix, <laughs> so... Uh, ma mainly because Trix gives you a full, like, proper voltage range instead of the, like, 1.2 volts. Like, here's the thing. I wouldn't have a problem if AMD actually just, like, integrated extreme overclocking support into overdrive. Like, if they just did that, that would be fine. And then, like, had a, y you know, you, like, you'd have to be, like, an a like get approval from AMD to, to use the extreme overclocking version of Trix, uh, of the, the extreme overclocking version of overdrive or whatever. Which, like, for, actually, no, that, that'd be dumb. That would still lock out a lot of casual people. Because, like, there'd be... Yeah, no, th they should just give you, like, a, a LN2 mode switch with a very long warning about how incredibly unsafe it is to use. Yeah, no, latest version is 6.4, and I have that, and that one's broken. Great. Awesome. Love that. Um, I still want to check the, let's just run the benchmark. We'll, we'll see if the, the memory timings did anything to the performance. We need to beat 16,000 and 150. Cool. GPU score. Buildzoid, ASIC quality. I don't know what the ASIC quality... I, I'll check that after this. I'll check the ASIC quality. I don't know what it is. I don't generally keep track of it. For me, disabling ultra-low power states solved it. We're going to have to try that disable ULPS thing. Either way, restarting the system fixes it, so it's not like a big problem to, 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 to check that, to try that. ASIC quality is basically a, uh, a uh, 
a uh, it's like silicon quality for the chip. The problem is that value doesn't really mean anything unless you're the manufacturer of the chip and know what the hell you actually program. Like, you have like some kind of reference table to tell you what, what it is that you, what it is that it actually means. Because like on AMD cards, which is really interesting, on Nvidia cards you want really high ASIC quality, um, and then I think. Well, no, my experience with AMD cards is kind of all over the place. Like on RX 480s and 580s, well, no, 580s, I don't know. But with the RX 480s I had, both of my RX 480s had pretty terrible ASIC scores. And they were good cards overclocking wise. Um, and then like HD 7970s, I have, uh, um, well, actually, yeah, so... HD 7970s seem to be, if you have a low ASIC score, they're really temperature sensitive. And they're really bad, and they don't scale with voltage. They're extremely temperature sensitive, and they don't scale with voltage. And if you drop the temperature, you can clock them quite a bit higher, and you can raise the core voltage. But if you're at like 75 degrees, you can't go over 1.25 volts and get any scaling out of it. Um, and then on NVIDIA's side, it's just higher ASIC is always better. That's as, as far as I know. Um, on AMDs, it's like you kind of get a trade-off depending on which direction you go. And ultimately, which one's best for liquid nitrogen? From Like Lumi, who's the number one overclocker in Finland, he's binned like a truckload of HD 7970s. And he says the best cards for LN2 are like 80% plus ASIC for 7970s. But I don't know how it trend like I don't know if it's consistent across the rest of the AMD GPU lineup or if on different gen like different menu like if it changes from card series to card series. So yeah, it's like on 7970s you want high ASIC, according to Lumi. Um, and I'd be inclined to believe that because even my like 7950 has a I think a reasonably relatively high ASIC. Okay, well those timings didn't do shit. <laughs> But the the 7950 has a better, definitely has a higher ASIC than my 7970 Vapor X, and it does clock higher for a given voltage. But we'll see how they do on liquid nitrogen. Okay, so very marginal improvement from that memory timing modification. Um, I wonder if we can keep clocking the memory higher and higher, because I did extend the range, right? Right. Yeah. 2400 megahertz. Now that's not going to work. Let's see if we can do 2300. Ultimately, I think what I'll do is I'll lock everything for into the BIOS. Like, I'll hard lock everything onto the BIOS. This memory is clocking, like, really high. I remember my, uh, the... The GTX 1070 I had was doing, like, I think 2400 or maybe 2500 megahertz memory clock. On GDDR5, because it's a 1070. And it was Micron as well. So this might not be such a big, like, it might not be such a loss after all. But the core, man, the core is sucks, and the heat sink is not good enough. I'm not gonna, it's not, like, it's not terrible. I'm sure you could buy 580s with way worse heat sinks, but I'm not impressed. And I legitimately think that inside a case, the, the airflow pattern for this heat sink is going to uh, is going to cause a conflict with most cases in terms of airflow which is just like yeah I max safe voltage for memory on an RX 580 
don't do it. If you mean the software voltage slider, don't do anything with it. It doesn't do anything. Like it's not even memory voltage. Because your memory voltage, like your memory voltage is fixed. Like your VDDQ voltage, that's fixed. You can't change that. The voltage that you can actually control in Wattman, um, in all of my testing, it hasn't done a damn thing ever. Like I've never seen it make any improvement to memory overclocking. And the other thing is, I can't find that voltage on the PCB either. Like, I don't know, like, I can't find the VRM that produces it. There's a good chance it might be some kind of a built regulator built into the die of the GPU. And it still doesn't really do anything for overclocking, in my experience. So I don't, like, I don't mess with that voltage. I have heard that it acts like if you're undervolting, that voltage acts like a V-core floor, though. So... Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. Like, it does the same thing with Vega, where if you, like, set your memory voltage really... Like, if you set your memory voltage really high on a Vega, your core voltage won't go down, won't go below that. Which seems to indicate that it's probably a built-in regulator on the die. And it's probably something like the CLDO... Like, if you've overclocked Ryzen, there's a... Um, there's a voltage in... In the in the motherboard BIOS is called uh, CLDO VDDP, which is a uh, on die voltage regulator for the memory controller, and that one again is derived off of uh, I think, well is derived off of like either core voltage or sock voltage, and basically you can't have it lower. Like it has to no, it has to be off a of sock voltage, because that one doesn't change. Actually, I don't know. But I think it's similar to that voltage on Ryzen. And it doesn't do a damn thing for overclocking, so that's why I'm not messing with it. The score... Okay, so now it's doing 16,400. 16, I really want to know where the memory's going to stop. Vega card and GPU-Z? Probably because uh, they haven't decoded the ASIC yet. I mean, where is it? I've forgotten how to check ASIC. No? Advance. Right, no, oops. ASIC quality. Oh, this is a 76%. Oh, that's why it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, no, I'm I'm used to the old like I I remember checking like which version. I remember GP like I I was thinking about how you did it on GPU Z before they added the advanced tab. That's my excuse. My defense. Okay, no, the memory timings actually took. It's impressive though. Like, honestly, I thought, like, the, this because the stock timings were loose as hell, and I was like... Maybe Micron not sucky at memory anymore. Which would be kind of surprising, but... It's possible. Okay, let's go... You know what? I want to skip a few 2400 megahertz. You know what, I'm not going to even fire up Fire Strike. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire off this. Okay. <laughs> That's what I expected. Let's see. No, that's not working because we're not on 10. They said reset, you stupid pile of garbage. Okay, so we know for sure it won't do 2400. Sucks about the voltage limit for the core. Like, that really, really sucks. Actually, there is a way to deal with it. It's hard. But there is a way to deal with it. So, um... 
this is, so with the AMD uh, GPU BIOS, um, there's a guide from, there's a guide from uh, Gupsterg about, uh, basically you can modify, there, there's like a table in the AMD BIOS which uh, um, contains, basically you can program the, anything on the card over I2C, I so like voltage controllers, you can program them from there. And there's a guide for how to set a core voltage offset um, on uh, on basically any card with a 3567B. So I could do that to get the extra core voltage without uh, like bypassing Wattman because it would be a offset set in the BIOS itself. And Wattman, as far as I know, doesn't play with offset voltage. It actually sets the voltage. So I could do that. Overdrive N tool has voltage offsets. Yeah, no, I know Overdrive N tool does it, but I don't want to use over like I want this card to be like you turn it on and it's as fa it's faster than a Fury. That, that's what I'm going for here. That's my goal. I want like I, I literally want to never ever touch any overclocking settings on this card again, because that way I'm less likely to break it. Because I start playing with overclocking. And, and I go like, ooh, let's see how far this goes. Oh, it's on fire now. <laughs> My daily system no longer posts. I wonder why that could be. So I'm going to see if not touching the, the core voltage stuff won't uh, trigger the, the silliness. Um... Like, I want to see what will happen with the core voltage now. I think it's still overridden, because AMD's drivers have been, become pretty tyrannical, but... Ah, 2350. All, okay, so 2300 memory clock is the absolute max. I wonder if I can go lower timings. Best benchmark benchmarks to test GPU stability. I literally just go and play games when I need to test stability, like... Pro like, I'll uh, run Fire Strike for a bit, and if it isn't immediately crashing, I'll just go play games. Because ultimately, you, if you're not doing some kind of, like, if you're not doing GPU compute, you know, or something like that, where, like, it, it doesn't matter if you're playing a game and you see some artifacts. Unless you're, like, a pro gamer and your game, like, crashes in the middle of a light, like, a like in, in the middle of a match or something. I don't know. Like... Yeah, so I generally don't care too much for my GPU stability if it's about not crashing in games. Um, and actually, as far as I know, there's actually a lot of games that are way, way, way more sensitive to stability than actual benchmarks. Like, I've heard Overwatch, GTA 5, um, The Witcher. Like, there's a few games out there which, like, will crash on things that, like, benchmarks Unigen, like, Unigen will run... Fire Strike will run, Time Spy will run, 3D Mark 11 will run, all of that will just be fine, it'll pass, and then you run one of these games and they just take the system down. And so it's, yeah, it's not, it's not consistent. So, okay, before I change anything in Wattman, I want to see the core voltage. Okay, no, it's still low. It's so low. Silly card. I don't really feel like doing the whole offset thing. It it's like actual work. <laughs> like it's hard to do. It's relative it's relatively hard to do. And I am incredibly lazy. Oh wait, now it has 225 1225. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <gasps> We have more Vico! <laughs> Hell yes! Okay, now it should do 1500. I don't know why that was a problem before. 2300. 
max DAP power limit. Yeah, I don't play Overwatch, so I don't know how, how stability sensitive it is. But I have heard that it, Overwatch, and there's some other games out there which are just way more crash happy than, than your usual benchmarks. I wonder if I could drop the memory timings even lower, because... I don't think it'll change the max memory clock that much, because if you look at what the timings actually look like, they don't look like they're that different across the frequency range. So it might be possible to go low. Er. I'm actually pretty happy with the 580. Like, I was honestly thinking that I'll replace the Fury and I'll actually see, like, a performance downgrade, but right now this is spitting out basically the exact same scores that my Fury does. And it has more VRAM. That's sad. Like, that's really sad to think about, actually. Because, like, the Fury was, like, a, basically a flagship at one point. And now it's getting run around, like, now now it's being basically matched by a slightly tweaked revision of the car, like, of a mid-range card. That is still mid-ranged. Uh, the Fury, I think it does, like, 16,500. Or something like that. It's like, it's somewhere in the 16,000 range. I haven't benchmarked it in ages. So, yeah. Those two Fury X's over there, which you can't see, but those do like 18k each. Okay, now that's wrong. The Fury does like 17k. And it's scoring low because my operating system's full of crap. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Fury and Fury X, clock for clock, are basically the same performance. Like, literally, basically the same performance. They're like 2% apart on benchmarks. Uh, also, because AMD broke HBM overclocking on the all drivers after 16.12.2, um, the HBM clock on all the cards is 500 megahertz. Though those two cards have tweaked HBM timings, as in I dropped the timings from 500 to 450. Um, that didn't really seem to do much to performance, though. So, yeah. Not as much as, like, HBM overclocking actually helped performance. Changing the timings doesn't seem to do a damn thing. The the Fury in my daily system, I think I have it set to run at like a 1100 megahertz or something like that. Or 1080. Okay, no, right now it's set to a gigahertz. Whatever. <laughs> I don't really care that much about my daily system's performance. So yeah, now we're doing like 16,600. You know what? Um, I can't even post like any scores I make with this right now because... Uh, well, no, it's not quite that bad, but I kind of want to see what I can get this to spit out with the CPU overclocked. So we're going to pull up the CPU um, and basically finish this off. And before we do that, I just want to run Firestrike for a bit on loop uh, with GPU-Z open so that we can see the temperatures. And there. And I'll answer some questions in the meantime. 
Uh, the power supply in my daily system is a Antec a high current gamer 850 watts. It's way too big. <laughs> I need like a like my daily system should probably be on like a 550 or a 650 watt power supply and it's on an 850. So yeah, that's that's not good. Well, it's not it's not not good, but it's basically I am wasting power for for no good reason. Because at idle, that power supply is just not going to be efficient. Hey, the fans are now spinning up before 60C. That's interesting. APU plans, if you mean the 2400G, basically my plans is to run Firestrike on it a bunch. And maybe some Time Spy and maybe... Like, I just basically just want to mess around with uh, seeing how far I can get the, get the score with... Uh, where is it? With these memory sticks right here. Um, I want to try, like, dual rank versus single rank. And just basically I just want to mess with memory overclocking on an APU. Because I think that could be really interesting. And I just dropped that stick. Anyway, it's fine. It fell on the desk. Um, but yeah, I just want to mess with that because uh, it's just it, it's just like usually you like usually when you overclock memory, like even on Ryzen where it does a lot, it's not that much. And I think with an APU, it'll be like way more difference with uh, with memory overclocking. And also from what I'm uh, what I've uh, sort of read on Facebook from. Uh, from Lucky Noob is that the memory controller on the APUs seems to be a lot better in terms of like behaving under like behaving at low temperatures. We might I might actually run the APU on liquid nitrogen. I don't know yet. I might. Um, it could be kind of interesting to see the little Vega iGPU doing two gigahertz. But from what I've read, uh, well, he posted that basically the APU memory controller is really really similar in terms of behavior to the Ryzen 2000 memory controller. So I'm hoping that it'll actually clock pretty high memory clock. So it, it might do like 30, um, maybe like 3800 at CL12, um, which would be pretty cool. Or even like, and that crash sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna say that's not, I think that was the core. How warm did that get? Max, 67. Okay, so it looks... So, we were running 50... Man, this card is... I mean, it's it's not that bad, but... I am still disappointed. Like this, this is pretty solid for 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 a 580, but I, I am still disappointed. Okay. Um, so basically, it looks like I'm going to be running like I'm going to lock the BIOS at 1480 um, core clock with the core voltage that it's at, and uh, that's it. I think. Now let's get the CPU up. No, I'm not going to set the heatsink on the GPU to full speed because like I can act like I can actually find like I actually find that amount of noise annoying. Um, and this card is supposed to go into my daily system. So, yeah, we're not going to run the fan speed maxed out. Um, that is a LN2 profile. Let's load that. Yes. There's a few things I need to change about this. Uh, right, I want it to be, because I want to relax this a bit. This profile's a kind of unreliable, so 1.42, advanced DRAM 11, 1 1.6, 1.6, that'll be fine. Uh, 
upgrading from an 1800X to a 2700X, do I need an X470 board to see better memory overclocking? Not as far as I know. As far as I know, the, the 2700Xs should just overclock memory better always because they have a better memory controller. And the BIOS is uh, even more mature. Uh, mature. Or now I don't know how to pronounce that. Good job, me. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, if you have a really bad X370 motherboard, then you'd probably want to upgrade, but... There shouldn't be, like, if you're on a Crosshair 6 Hero, you're fine. Yeah, which you, you mentioned you have. If you're on a Crosshair 6 Hero, it shouldn't matter. Wait a minute. I just realized something. That extends the voltage range. Well, whatever. I'm going to bench at 15... Okay, no. I'm just going to run at 1500... Apply. 2300. Apply. Apply. There we go. And uh, just to make sure. Apply. Apply. And actually, since this is for comparison's sake with hardware bot, I'm going to override the tessellation, turn that off. And let's see what this spits out. I'm not actually going to upload the score. It's probably going to suck too much. And I don't even have like an up-to-date version of system info or CPU-Z, so it wouldn't even be legal. But it's, it's good just to know. Yeah, that's actually, uh, so what uh, McCulty is saying about X470 boards generally clocking better on any CPU, that is very true, actually. Like, even the MSI X470 gaming board I tried, uh, with my Ryzen 7 1700, that board was doing CL12 at 3600 megahertz. Like, it's the first board where I've seen that actually, like, where, I, like I've, where I've actually seen those kinds of clocks at that kind of timing. Which is just crazy, because I didn't think the CPU was even able of posting that. And then on that board, it's just like, yeah, you can run that, it's fine. Um, so, yeah. That, that's, that's worth noting. Uh, no, I didn't slaughter the... Uh, I didn't slaughter the Dash F. I slaughtered this thing. And I didn't slaughter it. I'm just really unimpressed with the, uh, the feature set. Um, which, yeah, but we'll see. Like, I think the, the BIOS might make up for it. The VRM might actually turn out to be pretty solid in terms of overclocking results. But as far as the actual board goes, it's not something I would like to overclock with. Yeah, so, the th so it does look like Jumper118 just confirmed the that his uh, Crosshair 7 Hero does ridiculous memory clocks with a 1000 series. So yeah, I'm seeing the same thing. Like, just switching from the X370 boards to the X470 board, like, the memory overclocking is way better on the 1000 series. But if you have a 2000 series chip and you put it in an X370 board, it should still clock memory pretty well. Um, it might not be as good as if you were on an X470. Uh, the memory controller is in the CPU, not the motherboard. Yes, but the motherboard connects the memory to the CPU. And the quality of that connection affects memory overclocking. But the other thing is also, a big part of it also is uh, the, the BIOS programming. And it looks like the X470 boards just have straight up better BIOSes, I think. Like that, I think, is a big part of it. The X470 boards have way better memory initialization programming than the X370 boards. I don't think they've actually changed 
memory trace layout much, if at all. But the the BIOSes are probably way better at memory overclocking. That's where I think most of the difference will be. Um, uh, somebody says, I'm contemplating building a mini ITX system this summer using the X470-i and an R52600X. Uh, any thoughts on that MOBO? I think it's probably the best mini ITX board on X470. Um, though MSI's... Uh, MSI's... Uh, whoa. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, wait a minute. I was benchmarking those for... H double right, so they would have been holy crap, eighteen <laughs> k. I mean, it's without tessellation, but still eighteen freaking k. I'm the third fastest. Ah, eh, screw them all. I don't. I don't need to upload my score. My scores. Also, my uh, my uh, CPU score isn't great. Like it could be better. This, this, I've seen this chip do 27,000, um, but still, um, you know, the MSI is B350 ITX board. That thing looks really solid. So I really want to see what MSI comes out with for, for ITX on AM4, because their B350, well, for X470 or B450, I'm not sure which chipset they'll use. But uh, even just the X470 Gaming Plus, like this board, I li I really, I li I've liked overclocking on it a bit. So, yeah, but I think the, like, I think it's probably going to end up that if, if I test the Strix uh, X470i and the, and MSI puts out a B450i or a B, uh, or a X470i of their own, and I test both of them, I'll probably end up saying that it's like, pick your own poison kind of situation, I think. That, that, that's what I think will end up, would, would end up happening. Damn, I did not expect the. So yeah, I, I, see, I still got it. I still know how to overclock. <laughs> oh boy. Wait, how much memory score am I getting? Interesting, so I don't even have like the highest GPU score. It, the, the CPU is carrying me a good amount. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm gonna try some, wait. There's a silent BIOS and there's an OC BIOS, right? I have an idea. I have an idea. A daily BIOS and a suicide BIOS. <laughs> let's, let's build a BIOS here. I'm, I'm gonna check if the, that one has right protection. But, uh, she, did I plug in the LED thing there? Yeah, so you can see that the LEDs turn on and off. But uh, I want to. F I, I'm going to build a. I'm going to build a faster BIOS. Um, that's the old Pro. That's old, that's the old Pro BIOS. And let's see. Open uh, that one. Oh, right. You know what's really funny? Um, ATI Flash apparently fixes the checksum for you when you flash the BIOS, but for some reason, Polaris BIOS editor gets really triggered. Um, like, there's no... I, I've never seen a use in, in changing the, um, the checksum. Well, fixing the checksum. I've never bothered to do that. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to make a suicide bile. So we're going to go to like 1300. I think that's where the limit is. I don't think you can actually set anything higher than that. Um, we're going to start that bile off on... Okay, you know what? I want to leave it at 2000. But let's see about those memory timings. So that's 1750. Man, those are long. Okay, so... That's the one I currently copy-pasted everywhere. I don't think the 1625 is going to be that different. Let's try that. There. Save, and we're going to do it as pro uh, uh, rocket. There. I'm going to call that the rocket BIOS. 
Um, save. Uh, this is going to be great. And uh, I'm going to do, still going to use HXD for the version string. Um, and let's see, BZB. Damn, I've kind of run out of space. I'm going to put, actually, no, I'm going to put X for extreme version. And now we should be able to do like 1550 core clock. Um, let's go HCI flash and copy. And I'm going to need to delete the old BIOS.ROM. And actually, I want to put that on the OC BIOS. Yeah. So let's paste and rename. BIOS, flash BIOS. Will there ever be BIOS modding for Vega cards? Nope. Well, ask AMD. <laughs> if if I could if if I could force AMD into making BIOS modding work on Vega, I totally would. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to do that. Um, just check that the version took. Yeah, we have the X. And restart. Uh, if I want to get into competitive overclocking, is the hardware bot old school, is bed school com competition a good place to start? I don't really want to risk nuking my main rigs while I'm learning. Honestly, so, you know what? Like, I personally don't like competitions very much. Um... Like, I don't like co benchmarking on competitions because it's time limited. It's, uh, it's stress. In my opinion, it makes it a lot more stressful, right? Um, <laughs> so I prefer, if you want to, like, learn benchmarking, just go through the, like, just, just try to... It used to be that you could, like, farm hardware points with, like, if you had a reasonably fast system, but that, like, now wouldn't really... If you have, like, a... If you have, like, a CPU that can spit out, like, 50... Let's say 50,000 points plus for the CPU score in Vantage, you can buy, like, a lot of old GPUs that are very, very slow. We're talking, like, 10,000 to 20,000 points GPU score in Vantage and bench those. That would be, that would be one option in my opinion. That that's like you you could learn to vault mod on those GPUs and that kind of thing. And because they're old and slow, nobody like they're not going to cost a lot. That would be one option. Um, but yeah, you could try the old school as best school uh, competition. I personally just don't really like competitions that much. So yeah, okay. Let's see if we got that voltage range now. Um, Thirteen hundred. 1250? Are you kidding me? Reset. Yes. There, now it's at 1300. There. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know where the memory will max out again, but we, we, we all remember the, the good old trick for testing memory stability. Start render test, sensors. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this up and out of the way, and then we're going to go 2200 and apply. And we're not crashing yet. And then we're going to go 2300. Okay, no, that's too high. I said 2300, not 2400. Still not crashing. I'm going to call that good. Also, are we getting the voltage? Yeah, we're getting all that voltage. That's lovely. That's great. It's incredible. Um, let's go burn down some Fire Strike. Well, right now we're probably going to run 1550 at 1 1.3 volts. Probably. Let me just do one last thing. Uh, global 
power limit. Mac. Apply. Run. It, it already does like 1500 at 1.22. Uh, 1 so I'm hoping with 75 millivolts more, it'll do uh, 1550. Okay, no, it won't. Uh, I probably didn't have to do that. I'm pretty sure we're like, if we look at the voltage clock curve, we're in the point where the voltage goes up exponentially and the clocks don't change. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, that's probably why it's scaling like garbage. Still, this is solid, like, th this is looking, okay, let's see, 1520. That's gotta work. Like, there's no way that's not gonna work. It might have been the memory, though. So let's try 2200. Max that power limit. Max that fan speed. Uh, get that temperature control like that. NVIDIA has a BIOS signing service? Silly benchmark. Why can't AMD have that? I'd run one hell of a BIOS on Vega. <laughs> uh, what's with the 14 core Skylake? I'm not using it right now because uh, basically uh, I was messing around with GTX 590s and GTX 590s don't work on X299. So, that. And that is a quick ramp up. I'll probably, like, once I have all the Furies, I want to run four-way crossfire with the 7940X. That's a good use for a 7940X. Actually, it might even make sense to run the 7940X with dry ice for that, because uh, the physics score will be a massive bottleneck. Because the fu four Fury Xs spit out, like, 60k plus fire strike, which is, gr like, that's going to be great. I, I can't wait. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's just a massive, absolutely massive freaking score. Uh, when did you get this card? Yesterday. It turned up yesterday. So, yeah, why? Do you want to suggest that I return it? I'm not really one for returning things. Ultimately, it's going to go live in my daily system. I don't care that it's not that great. Um, yes, dry ice. Um, I'm actually working on like a dry ice uh, sponsorship type thing. It's not really a sponsorship, but basically some dry ice support. And that's going to be going to be ready end of this month. So that's why, like, so you'll, you'll see me on dry ice pretty soon. Once that's ready. So, yeah. 
What else was in the shipment? Um, I mean, okay, so I'm working on, I have a little project to develop these uh, really basic but effective current monitoring, uh, like, yeah, basically current monitoring um, uh, modules for PCIe slots, CPU power, all of that. Um, so I had a bunch of cables for that that came with it. So that's, and, uh, oh, right, and I ordered the, the case that I'm going to be testing motherboards in for thermals. And uh, there was one last thing. Oh, right, the motherboard came with the card. All of that came together. So, yeah. Uh. When you get a girlfriend, does, uh, does she also need to at least know what a PCB is? I think if, if, she, if she would survive in the same room as me for more than like 10 minutes, Knowing what a PCB is wouldn't really be her own choice. Just, just, because there's not much else I care about. So it would be just like, like, we'd probably go over what a PCB is in like the first conversation we have, or the second one. So that, that wouldn't really, <laughs> it doesn't really work like that. Um, anyway, let's see if we can do more core clock. 15, 15, no, the slider is stupid. Why does the slider go this high when the voltage doesn't go anywhere near that? Seriously, AMD, what is wrong with you? Okay, let's try 1535. That was close. <laughs> okay, so this card's pretty much maxed out. Yeah, so RX 580s, I'm going to say you want your ASIC low, not high. Because this is a 76%, and it scales like crap with voltage. Um, so, yeah, that sucks. Close the program. Um, I need to restart because you're not seeing it, but for me, the screen is artifacting like crazy. Actually, does it? You can sort of, yeah, you can see how the, the screen is flashing against my hand. So. What, that? This is this old 30 liter DWAR. Nah, that wasn't the memory. That's what the core does. That was the core. I wanted to try the, like, the, I think we can go still tighter on the memory timings. Mostly because I don't think, like, the, the straps look really similar, so I don't think there's that much difference between them. There is a way to decode the memory timings. I did, I've not looked into it. Too much work. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's do that. I'm just going to throw even more memory timing at it. Um, uh, where's Polaris BIOS Editor? And open rocket. Okay, invalid checksum. I don't care. So yeah, because you see, even like the thirteen seventy five timings don't look that different from like the from like the fifteen hundred. Bam. And actually, I wonder if we can keep changing that. Like, I know for a, f like, let's see, let's just see. Uh, okay, this new BIOS is going to be called the Extreme BIOS. Because it is extreme. Okay. Um, I'm going to change, update the version again. Just so that it's easy to keep track of. Uh, HXD.
Why am I being derp right now? Right, there it is. XXX. Save. Delete the old one. And, uh, rename. Files. Uh, do you need to reboot the PC if Waltman crashes while OCing? Uh, you can, I think you can just restart, like, you can force restart the AMD driver and that would fix it, but it's, it's easier to just restart, in my opinion. Like, it's more consistent. If you just restart, you know for, fa for a fact everything is good. If you, if, if you do anything else, then it's like, well, maybe it fi maybe I fixed it, maybe I didn't. That flash did take, so let's restart. I actually had pretty decent. So I I had a 290x which I killed, <laughs> the the super zombie 290x I built that was with Alpida memory, and uh, whoa the capture card is having a seizure. It's still having a seizure. Give me a second. Is this gonna. Because on my end, that was fine. There, now it's fixed. Um, you know, but I had a... My 290X with Alpida memory would do like 1550 uh, memory clock for, uh, for daily, actually. I ran the daily. And for benchmarking, I could run like 1600 plus even. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> 1350 core voltage. Burn the house down. Let's see. Does it actually... Oh yeah, yeah, it does that. It does 1330. It does 1350. So uh, let's just set that as the minimum state. Oh boy. This, this is way, this is like 100 millivolts, way too high. Just in, in case you're wondering if you could run this every day. No, you wouldn't. You would not want to do this every day. I'm gonna do 1550, damn it. 1550. What do you mean, what do you mean you don't want to apply that? Why is it being stupid? Okay, why are you being retarded now? Now it works. Man, this software. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so if I just set that as min. Okay, well, I just want to check something, because now, now I'm suspicious it's screwed up. No, no, the voltage is way up there, so everything is good. All is good. Voltage is up. 2300 megahertz memory clock. Max DAT power limit. Max that fan speed. Minimize that temperature target. And let's run 3D Mark. What's the difference between min max and non? Uh, so basically, the reason why you would lock the, the, the power states. Oh boy, okay, so 1500 megahertz timings do not work <laughs> at 2300 megahertz. But basically, if you lock the memory, if you lock the, the power states, it prevents the card from, well, it can slightly boost benchmark scores because the card doesn't try, like, doesn't take time to recognize that there's a 3D workload and change power states. It's just already in that power state. And the downside is you, you, you use a lot of power at idle for no good reason. Um, No. Actually, I forgot to set that to performance. Yeah. Anyway, let's set that. Set that. 1550. Y set as minimum. Y. OK. 
Okay, so 2300 will absolutely not work. So that is minimum. Now let's see if we can use 2000. Okay, 2200 work. 22 works. Okay, 2200 still looks like it will run. 2300 crashed last time immediately, so I'm not going to even like try run that because I don't think it'll actually work. Uh, there. Fire strike! Why you do this to me? You useless benchmark! Ignore! Ignore! Next! I agree! Next! Ooh, that's one thing I wanted to check. How much power does the 6950X use? Ugh. Man, this will be so much easier once I once I build the 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 little power monitoring modules. It, they'll basically be integrated as part of cable extensions, and uh, they'll be hooked up to an Arduino, which will just read them, and it'll be great because I'll be able to give you like real time power readings for like GPU, CPU. Everything and it'll be really accurate because it'll actually be it's it's basically the exact same measuring technique that Nvidia uses on their Pascal cards. So there's a shunt resistor and you just measure the voltage drop across it, and that's really really accurate because you see the actual voltage at the same time as the current instead of like these current clamps, which uh, well I can see the current but not necessarily the voltage at the same time, like and not the voltage. So let's see. Um, that one and uh, that one should be the. Wait, what? Why is this such a mess? Oh boy. There. So right now we're right idling on eight amps. That's that's great. <laughs> we're at three gigahertz. I mean, four point four gigahertz though. So it looks like for daily I'll just leave the card at like 2200 megahertz memory clock and 15, no, 1460 core. Um, because the voltage thing isn't working that well. I, I don't want to do that. I just want to run a benchmark. Yeah, we're at 1550, 2200. Let's pr let's hope that it don't cr doesn't crash immediately. Because if it does, then it's gonna destroy the three D Mark menu again. That's gonna suck. I have a funny feeling it crashed. <laughs> okay, it did. This card will not do 1550 core no matter how much voltage I shove into it. So I guess it might run... I'm 
going to think. Could you run? Could you run? How long is this stream? Three hours already. Um, Maybe Wait, did I accidentally set the memory clock to No, no, it's a twenty two hundred. Okay. Whatever. Let's do this. Fifteen thirty five. Man, this this card is scaling with voltage like so badly. It's probably because of the cooler. So one of the problems with with ramming voltage into things is generally you also need to keep the like the if you can lower the temperature, the voltage scaling improves. It's kind of unfortunate that this heatsink isn't better because unlike the unlike the GTR heatsink, I was scaling all the way up to like thirteen fifty. So basically up to this voltage. Admittedly, it wasn't clocking as as high. But then I swapped that card onto water cooling. And man, that card went far. Um, did like 1580 for Unigen in Heaven. It was crazy. Like it was doing almost like almost li liquid nitrogen. Lo oh well, yeah, it was doing crazy clocks. That that was great. Um, luckily, this doesn't need to do any uh, serious benchmarking, so it doesn't really matter that it kind of sucks. Let's try 2200, and hopefully 3D Mark didn't blow up. Uh, what? Oh no, the capture card's gone derp again. I don't know why it does that. Normally it's really well behaved. There, see? Now, now it's behaved again. Uh, don't you have a G third party? Yes. I do, but I'd need to take off the back plate to install it. I, I actually tried to install it today. Like I, I did did pull this out. But we can I it's running. It it's spitting out frames. It's not my problem. <laughs> oh, it crashed again. Okay, I'm gonna say the memory is now royally screwed up. Because uh, that that does look like a memory problem. Okay, so it looks like the 1500 megahertz timings are a bit too aggressive. It's not that this wouldn't work. It's just you'd need to remove the backplate, and there's no VRM cooling, and it's just like, at that point, I'm just like, that's too much work. I don't care. Like, because this card, ultimately, it's going to end up in my daily system. And so I'm, I'm basically, like, I'd, th th this right now is completely pointless. It's just, like, I'm interested where it stops. Um, and I'm kind of starting to run out of patience. <laughs> so we, we're probably going to be finishing the stream very, very soon. Um, uh, will you be getting the Tai Chi Ultimate? I want to buy the Tai Chi Ultimate. Um, I definitely want to buy the Tai Chi Ultimate. The thing is, uh, don't expect me to say massive overkill because the VRM on the Crosshair 7 Hero is stronger than on the Tai Chi Ultimate. I already know that. Um, but I still want to get the Tai Chi Ultimate so I can like do a full proper review of the board. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's better than the RX 480 Red Devil. It's still bad. <laughs> it's, like, honestly, everything about, like, if you have the choice of buying any other RX 480, I mean RX 580, actually, no, no, there are RX 580s that are worse than this. But there's a lot of RX 580s out there that are better than this. So I'd say probably buy those unless this is cheaper. Like the 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 nitro the sapphire nitro card, 
has a better VRM? Probably. Actually, this might be on par with the Nitro in terms of VRMs now that I think about it. But the XFX GTR-S, that has a better VRM. The Strix has a better VRM. The Gigabyte XTR, I think, is about the same or worse. And uh, that pretty much covers it, I think. Yeah, I think that covers it. Oh, uh, the XFX, I know, no, HISS has the, no, XFX GTS is the same PCB, I think, and then there's the, HISS has the Roaring, which I think is on the same GTR uh, PCB as the, as the XFX GTR-S. So that's actually, like, that's a really good PCB. So not much has changed from when the RX 480s were being produced. Um... VRM current balancing, uh, VRM power source is has changed a bit, but other than that, it's basically the same. Let's try that, 1535, and I'll leave the memory at 2000, and uh, let's try that. Hopefully 3D Mark didn't explode. Uh, capture card is blank. Oh, come on! What is it? Normally that thing is like the only thing, like the only thing that in the entire setup that is working is the capture card. And today it's the capture card. Of all the things to throw a fit. No, Ultra! No! There. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't for over 1.2, for Skylake, KB Lake, Coffee Lake, I wouldn't go over 1.3 volts system agent or IO. So, yeah. Just going to throw that out there. So it looks like the best way to probably cut, run this card is at uh, 1625 timings. Because you can run the memory at a higher clock than at the 1500 megahertz timings, like a lot higher clock. That's the thing, like, y your, your memory timings, it's, it's not, you know, you don't just max the timings and you don't just max the memory clock. You, you need to find the right balance. Which is usually max out memory clock with the lowest possible timings. <laughs> uh, Buildzoid, what's your real name? No? You're not getting that? I mean, if you wanted to get that, it's not that hard to find. But I don't really feel like sharing. Why do you even care about my first name? <laughs> BZ looks like an Alexi. Okay. Yeah, that, like, I, PKK Shadow has it right. Y'all weird. <laughs> I should do that. <laughs> Middle name Brutal. Yeah, see, Vincent Thunder has it right. My, my parents were massive fans of Futurama and uh, construction work. <laughs> That's why I'm called Bill and Sonia.
Yeah, okay, so we've made zero progress. Yeah, see, see? Zero progress, because the memory timings are tighter, but the memory clock is lower. And the core clock is actually higher, so we've lost performance because of the super, super low memory timings. This, okay, let's see if we can run a bit more memory clock to fix the uh, timing situation. But I think I might have to revert back to the 16, uh, 1600 memory, 1625 memory timings. Uh, the accent, yeah, the, the, don't, don't try to figure it out. It's basically a, like, it's, it's a mishmash, it's, it's the mishmash it is, because I went in, so, when I was, uh, like, up to grade, up to third grade, I went to a British, uh, school. Those are some fancy artifacts. That's really pretty. I like that. We got some, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's some nice artifacting. I like that. That's good. That's approved. Um, but I, like, up to grade three, I went to a school which was basically in British English. And then I went to a American school. And there was a lot of, uh, well, I had a computer science teacher who spoke Canadian. And basically because of the, who, who was Canadian. So, kind of that, um... Like in high school, I had a computer science teacher from Canada. So, but I, so I guess that all kind of just mixed. And the fact that I already had like a British accent and then went to American school and the, those two kind of mixed in that. Normally that I think sounds pretty Canadian. Um, and th then, yeah, so that's kind of why my accent's all over the place. Um, I, I think I'm going to... Yeah, I know I spoke Canadian. It's too. It's, we all know I'm great with with words. Um, anyway, so this is artifacting again. Um, I don't really think like honestly, it, the most I can see this spitting out is like eighteen point three k at like completely unreasonable core voltage, and just generally unrunnable settings. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to restart and we're going to build a final BIOS for the card and uh, I'm going to call it a day. So, I, right, not reset button. We're just going to restart. That's that that the the one point three two volt fourteen seventy RX four eighty. That's a terrible RX four eighty. Just just gonna let you know, <laughs> that is like awful. Anyway, um, so let's build that final BIOS. Um, let's get Polaris BIOS editor up. So uh, wait, no ATI flash Polaris BIOS editor. Okay. And uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna use the backup again. So BIOS backup, paste, rename, uh, RX580, Red Devil, daily. I'm gonna call it the daily BIOS, and uh, that's what I'm gonna open. Okay, this bot, yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, bam. And so, first things first, we're gonna mod that to build Zoid style limits, 200, uh, max memory frequency. I'm going to set the 2300, 2300. Um, 1460, I'm going to leave the core voltage alone. And I wanted the 1625. There. 
Actually, because I'm lazy for stress testing, let's run it like that. 2250. Right. And target temperature 70. Uh, medium PWM, high PWM, max PWM. Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call that good enough. Um, save yes. Uh, now we're gonna go and we're gonna do the HXD thing, uh, and uh, we're gonna take the daily, throw it in here. Gonna find the version string, copy it out. Man, I am so good at writing. BZB dot RX five eight RD Okay right now three hundred watt micron sixteen T Copy that out Don't bother savings paste over there save now we're going to make a copy of that BIOS, paste it, delete that one, rename, and BIOS, and flash. Uh, do you drink? I don't drink at all. So, GPU Z, just going to check that the BIOS actually, yeah, it took. Um, does anybody want the BIOS that I've just made? I mean, if you've been watching the stream, you should be fully aware of how I mod BIOS is. It's not really that difficult. I'm not really that good at it. <laughs> I would also appreciate if NVIDIA um, made uh, physics a thing that other companies can use, you know, not, not a proprietary technology. Because, like, like, honestly, if physics stayed as a standalone card, if physics stayed as a standalone add-in card, then anyone could run physics on any system, as long as they bought that standalone add-in card. But instead, you need to have an NVIDIA card. And it's even worse than that. NVIDIA won't let you run PhysX. Like, you can't, like, you can't have an RX 580, and you can't then buy, like, a GT 730, or a, uh, no, you couldn't, like, buy a GT 1030, right, and run the GT 1030 as a PhysX card. NVIDIA won't let you do that, which is like, why? Why do you want to make me not give you money? Like, just let me run your stupid card as a physics accelerator. Um, but no, the moment the NVIDIA driver detects an AMD card, it gets really triggered and won't let you do that. There was, like, some time ago, I remember there was somebody who hacked the NVIDIA drivers to make that work. But, yeah, NVIDIA cracked down on that. Um, I think what they, if I remember correctly, what NVIDIA did was that if you actually use those hacked drivers, the it would, physics would run with negative gravity. So instead of things falling down, they'd fall up. Which was just great, you know, that's awesome. Um, anyway, let's, let's run some Fire Strike. So, yeah, and basically because of NVIDIA's uh, decision to make physics proprietary, physics is like never used in any games, which is like, I get that you want, like, and the other thing is, it's not even, physics isn't even NVIDIA's technology. It was some company that NVIDIA bought, which is just like, yeah, you're, you're amazing. <laughs> great. Absolutely great. It's, it's like, that, that's why we can't have nice things, because NVIDIA buys the nice things and then doesn't want to share them. <laughs> and so nobody can use it anyway, because it's just like, the game devs won't, in, game devs won't use, like, unless NVIDIA ends up being 100% of the GPU market share, game devs won't use NVIDIA exclusive technologies a lot. 
because it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, so, yeah, and, and if NVIDIA was 100% of the G desktop GPU market share, NVIDIA would charge so high prices and would, like, lock the cards down to the point that it'd be just, like, it's, it's not, I don't even want to imagine what NVIDIA would do if they had that position. Um, let's run. Wait, yeah, because uh, I want to see how it'll, if it'll be stable. Wait, what the hell? Oh, is that Ultra? That's that was Ultra, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was Ultra. <laughs> Lol. That makes sense. Um, there. Nah, nah. I know physics is a part of GameWorks, but, like, the, the actual... Like, even now, phys you don't see that much physics. Like, you don't see... Like, all of the really, really cool stuff physics could do, you, you never see it. Ever. Like, nobody uses it for that. And there's like one or two games that use it for some, you know, uh, some physics, uh, like fi some phys basic physics uh, acceleration, but it's never, it's never used to its full potential. And it's a massive waste of something that could have been really, really cool. So, yeah, but NVIDIA bought it, so that, that's that. I don't feel bad about like NVIDIA, like NVIDIA keeping CUDA proprietary, because to be fair, they, they were the first to come up with that and they supported it, it's their own thing. I'm cool with that. That you can you can keep that proprietary. It would be better if it wasn't, but it's not like a lot of the other things where it's just like Nvidia. You are actively making things worse for everybody else with your decisions, like FreeSync and G-Sync, which is just like why can't you just adopt FreeSync? If G-Sync, because the other thing is Nvidia is like, oh yeah, G-Sync, G-Sync is superior technology to FreeSync, and it's like if it's such a superior technology, why won't you support FreeSync? Right? Intel supports FreeSync, AMD supports FreeSync, NVIDIA is like, nah, nah, we need to sell people uh, monitors with overpriced FPGAs in them. Because, yeah, like, awesome. OpenCL and Vulkan is faster on NVIDIA hardware than CUDA. Well, that's funny. No, like, I, I get the, they don't need to make G-Sync free. Like, I don't think they need to do that, because that, that, the G-Sync Excel, like, the module they sell to the monitor manufacturers, that's their own thing, that's cool. But the thing is, you can tell that NVIDIA very, like, NVIDIA is fully aware that the moment they stop keeping G-Sync proprietary, nobody is going to make a monitor with a G-Sync module. It doesn't make any sense, because the monitors are way more expensive. And the monitor makers don't want to, like, because if you do a FreeSync monitor, there's no rules. You just say, yeah, this supports FreeSync, uh, and that's it. And if FreeSync works good or bad on that monitor, that's kind of all over the place. But, uh, yeah. Um, it, it's just, yeah. And, and NVIDIA makes NVIDIA decisions. So I don't buy NVIDIA stuff until NVIDIA starts sharing a bit more. Um, Actually, I'm pretty sure NVIDIA's been stalling the approval for some display output standard for ages and ages and ages, specifically because that output is supposed to have variable refresh rate. Because NVIDIA doesn't want to allow... Because the thing is, for NVIDIA, G-Sync is a great vendor lock-in, right? You buy your expensive NVIDIA monitor and your expensive NVIDIA GPU, and monitors last longer than GPUs. Like, you probably replace your monitor less than you replace your GPU. So the next time you upgrade your GPU, you're going to buy an expensive NVIDIA card again because you have your expensive NVIDIA monitor. And then when, you know, and then when you eventually want to upgrade your NVIDIA monitor, if you're not upgrading your NVIDIA monitor at the same time as your NVIDIA card, you're going to buy an NVIDIA monitor for your NVIDIA card. And you'll always keep buying NVIDIA forever. It's the same thing Apple does. Right, like Apple does the same thing, and I think the same thing about Apple. Apple is awful, NVIDIA is too. So, yeah. This is running really well. Actually, I just realized something. I'm not running with tessellation, and tessellation actually makes a... And I just broke Firestrike. 
Fun fact, if, you, if, you, if you're running the, the, the stress test, you have to press, I mean, if you're running Firestrike for, for purposes of stability testing like this, you need to press escape. If you don't press escape, it crashes. As, as I've just clear, as I've just demonstrated, which is just great. Um, but this seems pretty stable. I'm just going to run it with tessellation because the thing is, on AMD cards, tessellation actually changes how stable the card is quite significantly. So we're just going to go to back to AMD optimized, uh, high perform, uh, high texture filtering quality. Uh, close that. Close. Hopefully, 3D Mark didn't blow up. Um, uh, do you think NVIDIA will try GPP again later under a different name and more secret? Maybe, but the thing is, like, the thing is, NVIDIA was, as far as, as from my reading into it, NVIDIA was really trying to, like, sort of fight Intel in the notebook space, because Intel is, like, Intel has, uh, you know, and Intel wants to make GPUs eventually, proper GPUs. Uh, and they're already teaming up with AMD to make the 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 on die Polar Vega card, right? The Ve Vega M GPU that they have on the on the on the NUC, and Nvidia sees that and they're like, this could very legitimately eat into our mobile GPU sales. It'd be really cool if we made mobile if we got the the laptop makers into an exclusivity deal with ourselves. The thing is. Um, Intel is bigger than NVIDIA, so <laughs> I don't think that's going to go that well for NVIDIA. As long, like, if they just wanted to attack d discrete graphics, they could. The, like, Asus won't stop them, Ga like, none of the, the discrete GPU makers would stop them. But Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Intel? They, they don't like, like, Intel doesn't like GPP at all. And Intel's way bigger than NVIDIA. But... And I don't think NVIDIA actually cares that much about the discrete market because otherwise they would have just packed up partially instead of what they did right now, which is like, yeah, we're not doing GPP at all. Um, so, yeah. So I don't know if it'll come back. I don't think it will unless NVIDIA sees an opportunity to push Intel out of the way because that's ultimately what, what NVIDIA seems to want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about the Intel Intel GPU as well. You know what I wonder if Intel will do? If Intel makes a discrete uh, desktop GPU, will they have a case skew? <laughs> like, I legit wonder if they'll have a case skew. And the thing is, um, I wouldn't be that bad. Like, I, depending on how Intel did a case skew skew, I wouldn't be that much against it. Because if you look at, like, their desktop CPU, Right? If you look at Intel CPUs and the case skews, it's like, what, you pay $20, $30 more than the non-K CPU and you get overclocking ability. Like, it's not really a big deal. And the thing is, Intel, in terms of actually supporting overclocking, like, they're really helpful to some extent. Like, yeah, it sucks that they have the whole K skew, non-K separation thing going on. But if you actually look, like... Compared to the the kind of support you have for GPU overclocking, Intel is just like, oh yeah, we're we're gonna uh, like the, the amount of access you get in Intel BIOS is ridiculous. Like you can turn off all the power limits, you can change the power limits, you can change how long the power limits last, you can change like you can change everything, right? And and then like the, even the sockets, like Intel CPU sockets get like dedicated pins for voltages like VCC PLL underscore OC. Like, that voltage doesn't need to exist from Intel's perspective. If they didn't care about overclocking, that voltage doesn't need to be a thing at all. But Intel's like, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to support extreme overclocking, so they made that voltage a thing. Because if you're on liquid nitrogen, if you don't have that voltage, KB Lake cold bugs and Sky Lake cold bugs and Coffee Lake cold bugs at, like, minus 120. And if you crank that voltage way up, you can go down to full pot. And, and Intel's like, yeah, we, we'll actually put in the work to make that, that a thing. And if a motherboard vendor wants to support that, they can. Um, whereas on the GPU side, it's just like the, the overclocking support is awful. Because like uh, your GPU dynamically changes memory timings. So somebody like NVIDIA or AMD could actually make it completely possible for a utility like Wattman to reprogram GPU timings on the fly if they actually cared about doing that. They could do that. It should be within their capabilities. And yeah, like Intel... 
would probably try to make that work. AMD is just like, nah, in, NVIDIA is just like, nope, <laughs> not at all. So if Intel did a KSQ GPU and they just gave you way more overclocking utilities than everybody else, I'd be totally cool with it. Like if they gave it really good overclocking support. Um, Yeah, Intel support tells you not to overclock their CPUs, but if Intel actually wanted you not to overclock, they just wouldn't sell you unlocked multipliers. Like, seriously. So, like, that that's the way I see it. Like, the, the company might tell you not to overclock, but as long as they don't actively stop me from doing it, I don't care. It's not like, like, NVIDIA, like, NVIDIA won't tell you not to over... Actually... I don't know what NVIDIA's official stance is on overclocking, but in terms of what NVIDIA does to support overclocking, NVIDIA is actively trying to block it. Like, very legitimately trying to block overclocking. They do everything in their power to make it as hard as possible to overclock their own GPUs as they can. Right? They actually even tried to completely lock down laptop uh, GPU overclocking. Um, Whereas Intel might be like, yeah, you, you shouldn't overclock our case skews. And then they still make case skews with all of the voltages available and all of the settings. And there's, like, as long as you buy a motherboard that goes to two volts, you can shove two volts into it. There's nobody going to stop you. Whereas NVIDIA cards is like, like the, the board partners for NVIDIA literally can't get unlocked BIOSes approved because NVIDIA is just like, nah, nah, no, nobody can change voltage on our cards. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the way I see it. So, and Intel might tell you not to overclock, but they support overclocking in terms of what they actually put into their products. NVIDIA, I don't know what they actually think about overclocking, but they definitely don't want to support it, as far as I can tell. And then AMD is like, yeah, we want to support a overclocking, and everything is broken. <laughs> it's like, you support it in the worst way possible. This seems very stable. I'm pretty happy with this. It's like, with AMD, it's like you have the, the driver which like builds in an overclocking utility, but the voltage range isn't high enough. And you have the, the Vega GPUs where they lock the BIOS modding, which is just like, why? Why would you do that? Everything was great before. What, why was, what, was the, what was the necessity to lock down the BIOS modding? Um, yeah. And at the same time, you know, they're, they're putting an overclocking utility into the driver that supports Vega. And it's just like, could, could you like make up your mind about what you're trying to do? Because <laughs> it's not clear. It's like, like some people at AMD evidently want to support overclocking. And then the other department seems to be like, nah, now nah, we don't want to do this. Lock, lock everything down as much as possible. Um, and break, break things like Fury HBM overclocking, which is just like, really? Like, like, all you had to do was not touch that. Like, because it worked before. And, and yeah, and, and, and then the excuse, and then the, the official stance on that was, like, HBM overclocking was never supposed to be uh, supported, which is just, like, but why would you block it? Like, so what if it wasn't supposed to work? It works, so just leave it alone. Like, would that be too hard? So, no, I actually think what happened is they accidentally broke the overclocking support for HBM, and then they decided that they don't actually have enough time, like, they can't spend time on, fit, like, putting it back into the driver. So they're like, oh, no, it's not supposed to work. It's, this, is, this is the way we're leaving it, because that's the, that's the right way. Which is just kind of unfortunate, in my opinion. Like, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to call this stable. This, this is actually working really well. I'm impressed. And uh, let, let's do one last benchmark to see what this uh, spits out. Um, so let's just run the benchmark now. See what my lovely configuration does. Uh, where did you get the RX 580 from? I bought it on, uh, I bought it at scan.co.uk. I was buying a bunch of other stuff.
Somebody asked if I'm undervolting. Since when have I turned into casual overclocking for filthy casuals? I'm not undervolting the card. I really wanted to overvolt the card, but that turns out to be too much effort. So <laughs> I'm just running it on stock volts, 1460 megahertz core clock, uh, 300 watts TDP, 200 watts current limit, and two, uh, 2250 megahertz memory clock with 1625 memory timings. This should spit out about 16,000 points graphics score. Okay, let's... So we're going to run physics for once. Uh, are you going to LN2 it? Uh, no. Not the 580. But the LN2 is reserved for better things. I want to see 2700X uh, overclocking. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. I'm only one guy, and these live streams are, like, legitimately hard for me to do. <laughs> like, they, they do take a lot of effort from me. Like, I feel drained after I press the stop button. Like, I just want to die. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the, the stock vaults, I, I'm sad about it, too. But the thing is, it's just, like, it's... It's... It's too too much work to get more volts out of this. The 16... Is this hooked up correctly? It is. That only pulled 16 amps. Right, like for, for the, the physics test. Uh, why did you get this card instead of the Nitro Plus version? Because I don't like the way the Nitro Plus cooler looks, I think. I think that was my logic. Let, let me... Actually, no, I thought... Wait, how did it work? Well, basically, okay, so... I didn't need the best card. And I was kind of interested in what this card is like, just because the predecessor was awful, and it looked like this version would be a bit better. Um, turns out this version is not that much better. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, yeah, the score is nice. So it spits out about 16.4k, so it's right around a Fury in terms of performance, so that's good. Um, now then, RX 580s. Honestly, if I wanted the best RX 580, I would have bought a uh, XFX GTR. That's the one I would, like, recommend. If you're buying an XF... Well, no, because the GTR probably... I think the GTR has one of the... Strix or the GTR would be my, my first choice. Um, though the GTR, I think, doesn't have, like, the, the heatsink could use some work on the GTR. It's probably about as bad as this one. Um, actually, it might be... a Actually, I'm not sure. I'd actually have to test the two cards against each other. Um, but uh, what card is it? The Strix. The Asus Strix is definitely better than this. The Nitro, I have no idea. I've not had one. Um, yeah, the, the GTR has the best PCB. Probably not the best heatsink. I think the heatsink's probably going to be like middle of the uh, middle of the 580s. The Strix has the best heatsink, almost definitely. This might be the second for heatsink, and like very medium to low on the VRM. But for daily, it's fine because it's just going to run stock anyway. So, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with the configuration on the card at this point. Um, you know, it holds, uh, it holds 70C um, without ramping up the fans to, ridic you know, to ridiculous speed. Um, it's relatively quiet. It spits out a good amount of performance. I mean, this, this is doing basically a fury, um, which is nice. Um, if anybody's interested, I could maybe upload the BIOS somewhere, but I don't really feel like, like, I don't see much of a reason, because if you just follow the video, then it sh if you just watch the live stream, it should be pretty, like, it should be abundantly clear how, how I made the BIOS. Uh, Nitro Plus 480 and 580. 
I can't remember right now. Um, seriously, this stream is now four, almost four hours long. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not answering any more questions. Um, Yeah, no, I, I basically had high hopes. I had high hopes when I bought this card. Those hopes were dashed quite expertly by a... Okay, like the heatsink, I think, is... Uh, I think the heatsink's not too bad. Um, I'd need to test some other cards to get, like, a good idea of where it ranks properly, but if we compare it to some, like, cards that I think the heatsinks are, like... If we, we go against, like, the gold standard for heatsink designs, which for me would be, like, a Fury then this is pretty bad. <laughs> Admittedly, the Fury heat sinks are, like, huge, but Furies tend to run hotter than... tend to run on a bit more power than these and run cooler than this. So, I think the, the heat sink isn't the... Like, I, I'd need to compare against some other RX, uh, RX 580s. Um, the VRM, definitely very disappointed in that. It's... Uh, I don't know exactly the, the power rating for the parts that this uses, but it's, uh, it's, it's a TDA-88... Uh, it looks like it's an Infineon TDA-88-240, which is a 4x4mm power stage, and Infineon doesn't make anything in the 4x4mm size rated for more than 40 amps. So this is, at best, a 40 amp power stage, at worst, a 35. Um, and based on some listings on a few part suppliers, this is a 35 amp, which means the six-phase VRM on here has a total current cap capacity of 210 amps, which is not big enough. <laughs> like, it's just not big enough. Um, there's not really any other way around that. So I'm pretty disappointed in the, in the VRM. But other than that, the, like, the, the, the heatsink seems to be okay. And ultimately, it's going to go in my daily system, so I don't care um, that much. So, yeah, that's it for, for today's live stream. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for all the massive don like donations. And, uh, and I'm not taking any more questions. End of the live stream. Say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube or any questions. Uh, if you'd like to support Actually Hardcore Overclocking, you can subscribe on Twitch. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can ring the bell button on YouTube. I've, actually, wait. This is something I definitely want to ask. Um, if you ring the bell, actually, this is really hard to check, but the community tab, do you get notified about posts to the community tab? Like when I post something to the community tab, only if you have the bell, bell like if you've belled my channel. Like that's really dumb. <laughs> like, do you actually need to check the notifications? Because I'm not sure if the, the community tab hits, subs hits the subscribers. I want to say it doesn't because like, like, I, well, th there's no indicator on how many people see a post to the community tab. And I do post to the community tab a lot. So, yeah, I, I think it would probably be best for most people to probably hit that bell. Because I use that, like, I announce live streams through that community tab and everything. Anyway. Um, Yeah, so Twi Twitch, Twitch knows how to do subscriptions and follows and everything. YouTube is just all over the bloody place. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, right, I forgot to mention that if you'd like to support AHOC more, then there's the PayPal, the Patreon, the shirts. There's, well, Twitch subscriptions, basically our money. Um, there's all of that. And, uh, oh, right, and if you'd like to send in your old hardware then uh, you can send me an email to buildzoid at gmail.com about it, and uh, um, we'll, I'll give you the details for like the P.O. box and everything. And that's it for the stream proper now. So thanks for watching, and goodbye. And that's the wrong mouse. Where's that stop button?
I should make an outro screen now that I think about it. <laughs>